we have to be able to uh, put all the pieces together, come up with a whole, and see what the whole is going to cost us. Uh, and for those of you that don't recall, uh, when I presented my proposed budget back in May, uh, my proposed budget, big picture, helicopter 10,000 feet, was right at just a hair under $50 million, which included a $10 million deficit, and it also included taking $10 million out of our fund balance, which is fairly healthy right now and spending those, our savings uh, in order to meet the budget. And I want to remind everybody what that proposed budget did. The proposed, bu the proposed budget uh, that I submitted uh, was based upon a no new tax revenue rate. And that means that we would not raise our tax rate and be able to fund that budget. Uh, that budget included a number of things. Uh, and it did not include a few things. And I want to remind everybody what those are as we begin this process. It was essentially the same as the previous year's budget. It assumes no new tax revenue rate. It did not include any capital projects. And that's going to be important because the capital projects are going to be a big issue for this budget. And there are things that we're going to need to talk about and look at here at this court. Uh, it included a carryover capital projects for ENCODE and, and uh, not the vehicle. It assumed that all positions will be filled. It did not provide for any new positions. That, it did not include any new positions. Those are going to be determined during these workshops. Um, it, uh, it included a transfer of almost $1.8 million from the general fund to road and bridge for operations. And it did not include the KCSO incentive proposal. And it included a 5% uh, wage adjustment for all employees. That's what we use instead of a COLA, cost of living. And uh, it included the necessary increase in the property uh, insurance premium, and it also included uh, the debt service on the 2023 bonds. Uh, so that's basically what that budget did. We now have a recommended budget. And y'all don't get the big notebooks like we do, but the, the recommended budget at this point is for uh, almost $60 million, about $10 million more than what I put in my proposed budget. When I say my proposed budget, it's an administrative administrative recommendation, and it comes from me as the Chief Budget Officer of the County, working with the Auditor's Office. Uh, and so uh, the recommendations that we've gotten from all of the department heads and the uh, elected officials have, have increased the budget by $10 million. And that does not include uh, road and bridge capital, nor does it include the KCSO uh, first responders incentive package. Judge, it includes the road and bridge capital. It does not include their Payroll. wage increase. Wage the increase. We're still, <coughs> trying, we're still grappling with those. So we've got the road and bridge wage, wage increase and the sheriff's department wage increase that are not included in this new $60, $60 million recommended budget. So you can see we, we expect this budget to increase by at least five, six, seven million, I don't know. Uh, by the time we get those packages in here. Uh, we'll just have to see. Anyway, uh, we have our job, our, our work cut out for us. And so, this is where we need to start. And and uh, just as a, as, a, as a little reminder, uh, during the last four years, going into this is my, my fifth budget that I've worked on, we have not increased the tax rate in Kirk County. Uh, and it is my hope uh, and prayer that we don't have to increase it this year, but it looks kind of grim. And we'll just have to see what that's going to look like. A lot of that will depend on what happens in these workshops. The, um, the average amount of money in the budget that translates into one cent tax rate increase is approximately, and I'm looking at my, my, my tax assessor collector because we sort of got my information, it's just, just a hair under $500,000. So for each million dollars that we budget, uh, that we have to raise the tax rate, uh, for one million dollars, that's a two cent tax rate increase. That's what that would be. 
And I just want everybody to keep that in mind as we start going through and trying to add up what we're going to put in this budget. So with that, uh, let me go ahead and I don't guess I brought in my agenda. Uh, let's go ahead and start with, uh, with and, and, and quite frankly, some of these are going to be very, very easy to deal with, and some are going to be a little bit more complex. So let's start with East County Court Law. <coughs> That's tab 427. <clears throat> Thank you. Good morning. We, I have two, I think, very easy requests. Uh, the first one is the second line court coordinator salary. Ashley just recently got a step uh, <clears throat> increase to $49,754. The second request is on line, it's the one that says machine repair for 56. Kelly's Steno machine to repair it has increased from $550 to $766. Those are our only two requests. That's good. You coming? Those are built in. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we, oh, she left with the county court. The, there's not any change in 428. Okay. And that's the House Bill 66? <laughs> That's an old house bill, but yes, it's been around a while. Then the health and insurance benefits? What tab are we on this one? She, she was going to pass out information. Okay. This is what was um, sent to me for um, our renewal. Um, it does have a, a slight increase for the insurance for our medical. Um, and it also shows a, I say huge, um, 4.2 decrease for the dental. staple packet you'll notice um, what my proposals are which did you go on off of the road with this? so the first one yeah that's going to be my proposals here okay. and it has on the very top it has um, ER pace difference of the entire and it has a total there um, if you notice on the very bottom of the column for the medical it has a $58,657.44. That's what the cost would be if the county paid for all of the medical increase. If you notice on the dental, we would actually um, get back $6,901.68, bringing the total um, being $51,755.76 <coughs> if, if the county picked up all of, of the increase, decrease. And that's your recommendation? Um, well, I actually brought three proposals to you. 
Okay, and the other one would be if the employee uh, picked up a portion of it, and then if the employee picked up a portion, and then the county picked up a portion. And you'll notice the, the three differences in, in what it would be. So if the employee paid the difference, um, the employee would end up paying $21.74 a month for children. The employee plus spouse would pick up uh, $22.88 a month. Employee and family would pick up three, uh, $36.64 with no change to the county, with the exception of employee only. And that would bring a increase to the employer um, to $17,311.92. And the third one would be if the employee picked up $20 per tier and the employer picked up the rest that would bring the county to uh, pick up Things are going up, but it is a shock that the dental portion is going down. Our increase is far less than I, mean, I do know the health side. 1.6 percent increase is I mean, pretty low. Right, exactly. So, you know, maybe that shows you that our employees are either. They're not going to the dentist. <laughs> so the dental, the dental that's been paid out is not been as much. Um, the medical that's paid out has decreased all, as well, and so has the pharmacy. So it seems like either we're being healthier or we are not going to the doctor as much. So that was part of it, as well as the contributions um, going into it has also increased from last year. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Treasurer. <coughs> Let's have a medal. Um, I actually decreased my budget um, by about seven hundred dollars, so if you all have any questions. I'm here to answer those. No questions, but thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? What more can we say? 216th district return. That's 83. Ma'am? 83. 83. Good morning. I don't have any, uh, there's a couple of changes actually. Uh, our tech insurance increased by $1,950 uh, because last year my investigator, who is a peace officer, full-time investigator, was prorated, and my part-time investigator was not a peace officer. This year, 
uh, my part-time investigator is a peace officer, and of course my full-time is not prorated. So that's the reason for the increase in 1,950. I think you're still having trouble finding the... Oh, they, I'm sorry? They're still trying okay. to find those out. I'll stop until you all find it. So it's in the back of the book where it says find... Yeah, towards the back. Okay. Actually, the third last, third and fourth, on the back. I got it. Yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Wilson. Okay. So our tech insurance has increased by $1,950 because last year my full-time investigator was prorated and uh, he's a peace officer and my part-time investigator was not a peace officer. This year, uh, my part-time investigator is a peace officer and of course neither he nor my full-time investigator will be prorated. Um, and then we also had an increase in phones. I think that's going to be county-wide for our cell phones because uh, the county has changed providers. Uh, it's my understanding it's going from Five Star to AT&T FirstNet. That's going to increase our phone costs by 1310 that's a total increase of $3,260 for those two items. But what we did is we looked to see where we could move from another line item to cover those two costs. And what we did is we took that $3,260 out of professional services. Professional services we use for uh, transcripts on appeal, uh, where the state has to pay for the transcript. For example, last week we tried a continuous sexual abuse of a young child case. The defendant had retained counsel, it was a four day trial. If counsel's retained, then we have to pay for that transcript. If we do any state's appeals, we have to uh, pay for the transcripts and those are also for translations. We have a lot of Spanish speakers now it seems like, so sometimes we need translations. But since we didn't use um, all of it last year, we decided that we would take that 3260 out of that line item instead of asking the county to give us more money. So that's the only change. Just a, took money out of one line item and moved it to another. It's effectively budgeted. Uh, correct. correct. Well, <coughs> your expertise and experience option show here. Uh, we appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Anything else you No. All right. Thank you. We're getting, we're getting good report cards first. <laughs> uh, oh, the forfeiture. Okay, sure. So, um, of course, this is not, it is county money because it's not my personal money, but um, so what we did is we are, we just bought new computers. Our computers that we have, some of them are seven years. It's number 75. Right, back. Some of our computers are seven years old or more, and we have a lot of uh, cell phone extractions that we have to be able to access on our computer. Right now, we go to the sheriff's office lab to access those. So we have just ordered uh, new computers for everyone in the office, but we're using forfeiture funds for that, and I believe that's going to come up later uh, because it's we're paying for them this budget season. So. We've increased our computer line item on our forfeiture budget to $8,000 because we also need new laptops. We can't, um, we have to be able to access things like the phone extractions and other things in the courtroom. And if we don't have good, strong computers, that's not easy to do. Right now we can't do that through our laptops. So we will be purchasing some new laptops. We had uh, Bruce order one for our investigator and we wanted to let him try it out and see if that would work for us. It does, so we're gonna order some more. Probably what we'll do is we'll order for the attorneys and let the staff have um, the attorney laptops that we currently have. We've also added um, some money to our software line item. Uh, that's to cover some software. We share the cost of some software for child pornography, phone extractions with the 198 DA's office, and that's our portion, so we've gone ahead and budgeted that. Uh, we've increased our meals and lodgings for travel, as well as uh, conferences for attorneys and staff and other agencies, uh, because 
in the past, when we've used money for these items, what we do is we just go, we're not already budgeted for them, so we have to go to the uh, auditor's office, and I'm not sure how it's done. It's a budget amendment, correct? We do a budget amendment. So uh, this, this year we decided we would budget. We do sometimes pay for other agencies to attend conferences, and sometimes, depending on what conferences we attend, it could go over what we budgeted. For example, this year, all the attorneys are going to Crimes Against Children Conference in Dallas. It's a, a worldwide recognized conference. And it's an excellent conference, and we're all going. And that's in Dallas, so it'll be uh, probably take out a lot of money out of our, what we currently have budgeted. So we decided to go ahead and budget it in the forfeiture fund. Very good. All right. Thank you. Next is Ag Extension Office. I just wanted to tell you, uh, the front of the book is under Fund 10, which will see the departments have three digits. And then towards the back, it has the funds, which will see the Fund 12, Fund 13. So that'll make it a little easier. And this one would be at, towards the front, 665. Probably closer it's to the It's kind of in the middle. <coughs> I got it. Good morning, Angela Fiddler with the Kirk County Agri-Life Extension Office. Um, I had we had a few line items with increases, um, and we'll just go through those. Line item 315. Uh, this would be books, publications, dues, and subscriptions. This also uncovers our association dues. Um, we are increasing that. Um, QuickBooks is one of those subscriptions that we're going to be paying for now. Um, I believe that's about $800 a year. So we had to increase that for that reason. There were some other subscriptions for resources that we were needing um, as we're growing our 4-H program and things like that. There were some uh, judging subscription resource that we would like to have um, as well as our association dues now that we have all three county agents in place, which we're very happy about. Um, we want to make sure that we have money in there to um, do our professional development associations, and we have multiple associations. So that line item we have increased. Um, our next line item, did you have any questions about that one? Okay, next, next line, I'm sorry, and I did not bring my reading <coughs> glasses, so I might be borrowing them for <laughs> I keep thinking I'm young and I'm not. Okay. Um, it's 331. That's the fuel. And last year, we actually went over our budget uh, on fuel. We know that fuel it continues to increase, um, and our need to travel has not decreased, and we were wanting to ask for 5000 So we've increased that by $1,000. Okay. Our next line item, 450, repairs and maintenance. Um, this, we've had to increase um, our rugs from Unifirst. That comes out of that line item, and they go up every two years. So they haven't gone up, and so we are at that two-year mark. So we wanted to prepare for that. Um, so we went up some on that line item. Um, 454, a vehicle repair and maintenance. Um, we are increasing that one up to $5,000. Um, we went over our budget last year. Um, we were at, we actually spent $5,000, and so we wanted to actually meet that need there. That includes our, that's also where our deductible comes out. If you were to hit a deer, which we, we had an agent that hit a deer, so, so that was a $1,000 deductible. So. Um, not saying that that will get used, but it's nice to have it. So we had to move things around and cover that cost. Let so me ask you a question yes, real sir. quick. Uh, what's the, how many vehicles are we talking about we have, and about their year? Sure, we have three vehicles uh, currently at our extension office. We had our Explorer, which was new last year. Right. Uh, we had the van, 2008 van, and then we have the 2018 uh, truck that we have. And so that also includes oil changes. That's where the Explorer lease comes out of that line item as well, and vehicle repairs. So we'll still have to pay for vehicle repairs for that truck and the van. And believe it or not, that van's doing really well. 
I think it just needed a friend in the parking lot. <laughs> just kidding. But yes, uh, so that's why we've increased that line item. <coughs> uh, 461 is our lease copier. Uh, we've had to increase that because of our color copies have increased in price. Um, we're looking at right now, uh, we'll probably go over our budget on that for this year. Um, so we have increased that um, to 4100 Let me see. And I, Lindsay could give us the breakdown, but she figured it out herself. So, um, and then I believe my only other, well, there's two other line items. 485 Actually, no, we didn't go up on that. We stayed at 1500 570 this is also the capital outlay uh, that explores costing 955 a month so that's what that is so we just want to make sure that we can cover that so I'm sorry I, I said vehicle the Explorer lease was in 454 but it's not it's just the repairs and things that we have to do and any kind of maintenance that we have to do on that I believe what y'all are looking at for the lease is under 462. We've moved that. Oh, okay. That's I didn't have that. Vehicle lease. Okay. So it moved up to 462, mm -hmm. 462. So we need to move that up there. And it, yeah, it will be on the next one, probably. <coughs> okay. Sorry, Ben. So I'm just trying to Okay. What year's that new explorer that we got last year? Or this it year? was a, it's a 20, should be a 2022. It was brand new. Yeah. But also it was just a little bit over $5,000 total. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. 51, 50. <laughs> the community glasses. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a lot of hot mom. Preparing for that. <laughs> I wanted these to be here just in case. Thank you. Just in case you need to be here What time is Bruce at JT? 456. Good morning, Judge. Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, third of it. Okay. Looks like me, you just we raised what you needed to in your own budget. Yes, sir. It's stuff four hundred dollars less in conference and training, which we're good with uh, judge on that. Plus, uh, if it's appropriate to discuss the request for an increase for the hourly uh, wage for our temporary person from ten to fifteen dollars, I don't anticipate any increase in budget. Uh, <clears throat> for that particular year, I think we can absorb that pretty readily. Well, if you can absorb that and keep the budget the same, you have no complaints from me. Very good, sir. Thank you. Anything else for This God's always good, man. Thank you. And uh, be sure to remind us about the pay increase when we finalize the budget. It'll be done. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Road Bridge. Which are we going to start with? It's going to be 6, 12. So you, have to, you have to go after uh, fund 14. <coughs> so towards the back, you see fund 14, and then it has the 6, 12, road of bridge. Okay, um, I'll just kind of, I think the ones I'll hit are the ones that either uh, 
uh, went up or went down, um, and then there's a bunch that we kept the same, but on 205, the property liability insurance, um, we did not realize that we were to budget this. We got a hold of uh, ROSA and HR, um, and we figured uh, 18750 um, would cover it. Um, it was 15000 um, so we got with her to kind of find out um, what was paid out, and this uh, also includes monies for pollution coverage for the fuel tanks that are paid annually. Um, 315 books, publications, and dues. Um, we went up, it was 262. Uh, we put 500 in there, increasing due to CDL training materials, also for subscriptions to KDT and Hill Country Community Journal coming out of our contingencies um, for bids and things like that. But really the big thing is the CDL training that we've started to do in-house. Um, that's for any materials that we need for the employee that's going through the training program, which to kind of update the court, the first person that we sent through has completed everything, got his CDL, um, which is really, really great. Um, I was telling Commissioner Harris that the DMV called our um, person in the shop that took on this um, project to see if we couldn't train in-house instead of having to send to a truck driving school that's probably six to $10,000. Um, the DMV called him and asked if he would get a hold of KISD and Ingram ISD. They were having trouble getting things set up for their bus drivers. So Tony has worked with them to kind of tell them what they need to do in order to be in compliance. Um, I believe they, they've been paying, I think, some fee out in it, but they're trying to get it in-house training. So there's a pretty good savings there um, by doing that. Like I said, we finally got the one that we started with. We got him through, and it was last week he did his driving tests and got his CDL. So it shows that our program is working and it also um, is a compliment from the DMV that they feel like we have everything set up the way it needs to be set up. So it will be a good savings for the county. Um, uniforms 316, um, we put a little bit more in there, it was 34,660 um, boots. Um, we haven't changed that amount. It's uh, still two two hundred and fifty dollars a pair. Uh, seven seventy five hundred uh, plus in the new uniform contract. We're switching uniform companies. Um, the one that we've been with ever since I started working there. Um, the performance has really really lacked. We get a lot of really dirty uniforms. Um, uniforms that should be replaced. Um, last year when we had asked them if there were any budget increases. Um, they told us that there shouldn't be, and we got socked with a 25% increase. Service uniforms, we're going to switch with them, and they have guaranteed that we would not have an annual increase of more than um, 5% a year. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we want to make sure that we've got enough in there um, to cover the year. Um, and our fuel, uh, the current budget, $181,034. Um, we added 5% for price increases. Um, remember, for us, we not only have the gasoline, but we also have on and off road diesel. So sometimes, you know, the gas prices may go down and the diesel prices may not change or go up. Um, so we put a little bit more in there. If you do follow our budget, um, in the first probably Three or four months, you usually don't see a whole lot of fuel usage. But come May, through the end of the budget, when we start up our seal coat program, that's when you really start to see the dollars come down um, because we're running a lot of different pieces of equipment. Um, notices, uh, 430, um, we added an extra $250. We're now bidding our road materials and fuel bids at two different times of the year. Um, this will also allow for any rebids um, like we had to do um, last commissioner's court for our crushed paving gravel. Equipment repairs, um, 450. 
This one I'm happy on because current budget is 220,000. Uh, we lowered it to 195. A lot of this is with um, our fleet changes and getting newer equipment in. Um, we've got new supervisor pickups. Um, our costs should not be near as high on our repairs and things like that. Um, so we did lower this. Our shop supervisor was pretty confident that those amounts should go down when we've got newer equipment because we should be just doing maintenance on the equipment instead of a lot of repairs. And we'll get to the equipment stuff after I go through here. Um, inspection fees, 451. Um, we lowered that. Um, a lot of it is due to fleet changes. We got rid of a lot of equipment. Um, don't have to inspect as many pieces. I did hear that they're talking about getting rid of the inspection stickers maybe in 2025. I don't know if that will be for our stuff and commercial vehicles, but I hope someday maybe they do get rid of that. Um, I heard they're getting rid of the stickers, but they're still charging the fee. Oh, are they? Uh, 462 will come back to um, that is on capital lease payments that's some of the handouts I gave you um, 555 road base um, we boosted it a little bit 20% increase due to trucking we'll need additional to complete road repair from center point <coughs> sewer project 556 concrete and cattle guards, um, we did have $11,777. We increased it to $16,000. We've got three to four cattle guards that need rehab, um, some on Honey Creek and Hasenwinkel. Um, guardrails, $560. Um, we had $21,949. We boosted it up to $30,000. Um, last bid we received was $63 a foot. This was a bid we got for guardrail um, on Eagle Ridge. Uh, this amount will cover 476 feet and it does not include Eagle Ridge for guardrail. Um, the Eagle Ridge quote I want to say was about $98,000 for the, the area that the county engineer felt should be, um, the guardrail should be put. This does not include that. Um, 570 we'll get back to that's the capital outlay 575 maintenance facility um, we've had forty thousand dollars in there um, for the past few years we increased it a little bit to 50 this is improvements to existing new property that's behind us um, for road and bridge <coughs> additional fencing um, Gates, we're having some gates put in, but there may be an additional gate that may be put in once we know where Road and Bridge is going to be on that golf course property. And possibly any demolition or removal of um, buildings back there, that house that's back there that used to be the little pro shop, and I think there's a couple sheds. Um, 580, special projects, road reconstruction. Um, we we're currently at three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. We brought it up to five hundred thousand. Bear Creek Road. It's three and a half miles. It's something we'll have to do in two phases, um, and then we also will be concentrating on road repairs, uh, Center Point Wastewater Project roads that were damaged pretty bad. This does not include um, one point five million possibly for Eagle Ridge. Um, 599 contingencies, uh, $50,000 increase from 30 originally budgeted for 22, 23 additional of 20,000 for any unknowns <coughs> since we did not increase several, several line items. It's kind of our catch all. If we fall short on something, um, we've been able to pull out of contingencies. Um, and I think you guys are gonna do um, the funds um, a little bit later, is that right? Um, Tanya Fund 22 and things like that, or should I go over those? Um, it's up to them. Okay. Either way. Um, Charlie's next is what she's saying, and then she'll be back up. I mean, whatever you want to do, Charlie may have some things also he wanted to discuss, but this is out of Fund 22. 
Um, the State Highway 27 drainage project. Okay. So if y'all fund the fund 22 or the 22 marker? Sorry. That's okay. It's about three three times after Kelly's now. Uh, 22 flood control. Okay. Um, this is on that drainage project for Highway 27. I believe I think John Hewitt completed the engineering on it kind of being done in phases. Um, what got put in it, um, we confirmed with Charlie on this, uh, the $1,259,036. Um, it includes 250 for acquisition and surveys, $9,036 carryover from fiscal year 21-22 for Hewitt Engineering, and 1,000 as a placeholder for fiscal year 23-24, uh, hoping, or a million, I'm sorry, I said a thousand. Um, they're hoping to receive a grant on the funding for this, but that is those three drainage easements that will help with the flooding in center point. So, so kind of help me with the background here. Where is this? There's three the different drainage? locations. Um, Charlie, do you know what the exact it's one Willow Bend, one is... It's the Highway Department, in Highway Department yeah. increase yeah. the culvert size when they do their work, and they block them off because there's no place for the water to go, and it'll go pretty much just to the, the idea is anyway, to go just to the east of the place that's got all those old compressors stacked up, yeah. right kind of in that area, pretty close, somewhere in there, you get it to the river. Um, it's several locations yeah. along Highway 27 where Currently, water backs up um, and then goes over the top of the highway uh, to where you can't cross the highway or drive through it because it might be too deep. Um, and uh, TxDOT has increased the culverts underneath, but there's not a, a drainage path once it crosses the highway to get to the river. And so it, that's why it backs up. Even though those culverts are increased in size, it's still choke point right after this is to make corrections to that. Been an ongoing problem for a while. On the south side of the road, past the airport, uh, headed up to Martin Marietta. Yes. Uh, yeah, and it's also right around Mini Mark. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Mini Mark floods yeah. pretty easily, and it's trying to get that water. He that has to go to the Silver Creek. It's a creek right there on the east side of San Juan. Silver Creek. Yeah, Silver Creek or the or either has to go that way or straight to the river. So it's kind of an ongoing project. Um, I believe all the engineering has been completed, um, and it's just I'll give it yeah, it's it's kind of a placeholder so things don't get forgotten in it. Um, I did admit we've been holding this place for years. I know yeah. grant funded, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, on the flood warning system, the hundred thousand is listed. Uh, is that combining with what the Kendall County is doing, or is that just a placeholder? I think it's a placeholder. I haven't really heard anything about it's it. A placeholder. Um, that's been since March. Because wasn't it UGRA yeah, that it kind of started with UGRA and and. Uh, <coughs> the advanced flood warning system, Charlie, am I correct on that? That's correct. They, and I think that they thought that they could get some grants. It's been a while. Um, but I haven't really heard much on it for the last couple of years. Uh, I'm blind on the county engineer, county county. Uh, Rick, to Volca. Yeah, to Volca. Because my understanding is that Campbell County has a grant. They're putting them all up side of the street in Clark County. And uh, it's only a soccer street because that's what caused the problems in Kendall County, uh, in their opinion. <laughs> I mean, it's still the bottom of the river because it backs up to soccer street. But anyway, um, I'm not sure where they are. I think they funded this, but funded and going forward with their project on soccer street for the mostly mm -hmm. Kendall County, which is great for us. Um, 
but I'm not sure how they got that. So we need to find out how it, what funding, what process they used to get that. On the center point project, was that total? Is that the total amount, or was that an estimated our portion of the grant? The one million. Um, that is an estimate from uh, two years ago of the total. I don't know what it would be now. <coughs> I mean, it seems that it makes more sense to put maybe, you know, if we're going to fund it, to put one five, one million in a contingency fund that would cover a bunch of these projects rather than have them all listed. I mean, we keep listed out here, I guess. But rather, we really don't know on either one of those what it's going to cost. How are you going to listen? This is a, a flood control, control contingency. Let's put a million dollars in it and see where, you know, or even less possibly. I mean, I would say less. That's what I'm thinking. Like 100,000 would just come Yeah. Do we need a placeholder yeah. of 100,000? You know, also, really, um, if this was two years old, uh, it'd be old I think it's older than that. And if, if you, mm -hmm. if it, if <laughs> some kind of matching grant is determined by how much money is in this fund, and we knew that, that'd be different. But just to keep that money tied up there, yeah, it's too much. I, I think, I think when Commissioner Mosier was here, if I'm not mistaken, I think he wanted to. I don't remember the amount, but he wanted to put a pretty large amount just to make sure that this project eventually would be done. And he felt that if we didn't, I don't really care where you know where you guys. Put it if you think putting it in a contingency. He just felt if, if there was a placeholder for it, kind of reminds you that this needs to get done. So it sounds like when I find something in my junk drawer, I forgot I had. So <laughs> we we did the the amount, as I recall, was a compromise. He wanted more, like Kelly said, to put something in there as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. Nothing's happened with it. We have no evidence that anything will. Nobody's pursuing it. Looks like a good place to cut to me. I think so. Now, we need to keep track of it, but the reality with grants, which is going to take for either of these projects, is going to take grant funding, and the grant takes at least a year to get. I mean, I can't imagine if we're going to apply for a grant and get that funding. Well, then there's engineering, I assume, that has to be done. Well, there's, I think there's money in the cap. We need the money for engineering. Okay. And for the, but maybe What's the this nature of this repair? I mean, is this digging a ditch and a couple culverts to go underneath. This is not the right. 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 This is, this is uh, something old. The, the flood warning system is along the bottom. No. Yeah. Yeah. The no. other one is um, buying right away. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what, 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 that's the problem. We don't have problem. What this came from was a system that was not yet perfected that would gauge the water flow and how fast it's coming and so on. And then alert us via cell phone. That was what he presented originally. Uh, I don't know, remember the particulars, the, who manufactured it, had run the testing on it. That started about where I was here. here. It was an idea, really. Well, we were looking at trying to, it, it came a big focus right after the big flood blackout. And that's what kind of got us raised up on everyone's radar. They put in a system that's tied in Bear County, I believe. And we looked at it because we need it. Um, hard to remember that we did when we haven't had rain or flood in so long, but we will again. I recommend putting like 250000 for engineering for, the, for either of these projects. And, and acquisition. And uh, maybe the acquisition, something like that. Um, when we start moving on, but I, don't, I definitely don't need one point two million. No, that's a, that's a good million dollar cut. Well, I've got a question. The audit. On our budget summary sheet, okay, uh, I look at NRC flood control under the uh, fund name, and it says one million three fifty nine oh thirty six. That's what's in the budget. That's what's being requested. Yes. And so that's what we're talking about adjusting. Is this this? Is that correct? Down to two fifty. Is that what I'm hearing? 
for the non-major part? I mean, I think that's... For both of these projects? We're not far enough along to be ready for construction. Yeah. Right. I mean, we've been having a lot of conversations if we were, and we're just not. We're, we're focused on the sewer project right now. We're focused on all the development that's going on in the county, and this has been on the back burner. So, so cutting it to 250 is very reasonable. Well, there's, there's is, wrong it, with is it on the back burner, or is anybody even assigned to pursue it? That's a different thing. I don't think anybody's pursuing this in any way. We would pursue it if we weren't doing other things right now. So that's not really even a back burner issue. It's just something that we, that we might get to. I, I think the other issue is that um, when it actually is time to construct, I think we're really going to need some help from grants. And there's the regional um, Guadalupe um, Stormwater Group. Everybody from the public is listening. I think that we're not at a point where we're ready to uh, go to construction anytime soon or in the next year. Um, I think we've always been hopeful that there would be some grants available and we we're hoping those grants would dovetail nicely into 2024 and they haven't. So. Is that something that Noel is actively looking for? No, um, this this is a we're we're hoping it would align with the regional flood planning group money that's coming out in 2024. They are in the process of putting together their final projects that they're going to recommend, and um, and Kerr County's not in that, so these projects aren't in. It. <clears throat> they would have wanted a uh, cost benefit analysis and some other things. To, in order to put it into a project category, so uh, it's not in a, a construction category to them. We weren't far enough along. And who, who's doing the cost benefit <coughs> analysis, or who would do it? We would need an engineering firm to do that for us at the appropriate time. Right. What was a on both those projects? What would engineering cost? Uh, most of the engineering is done for uh, the the stormwater um, analysis. We know where we want uh, culverts and, and drainage ditches to be constructed. Uh, we have an idea of how big, how deep, and how much it would cost. That's where those estimates came from. Uh, but we, we really need to get the property acquired is really the next step. Um, I think once property is acquired, then you know for sure what your limitations are uh, as far as how big, how deep, how wide a, a drainage ditch can be, and uh, and then it would be the appropriate time to to do a final run through with the engineering and, and cost estimates and cost benefit analysis to where you could try to make a project out of it and apply for grant funding. Well, where I'm coming from is we have in the budget right now included all that entire capital project, uh, one million. Three hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars is the change. Uh, are we talking about taking that out of the budget and putting a place over in the two fifty? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, it's good to me. I would put less. Well, the, if we're going to acquire Rodaway, Rodaway is good. Yeah. I, I understand that, but if we're act again, not my point is if we're actively engaged, that's one thing. If we're just holding the place, then you keep that line in your budget. If you have to put more money in. We put more money in it, and it sounds like it's going to be at least a year. So, but yeah, but most of the engineering is done according to Charlie, and I remember that right. the engineering study was done. But the right away hasn't been acquired, and, and I know. Charlie's saying that we can't move forward until you get right away. Okay, acquisitions, then you put in a reasonable amount for that. I, I think we have 250 in the 250 budget right now. It's a reasonable amount for that. What we've got, know. you're saying 250 for both of these. Say yes. 250 for that, and I would put in another hundred thousand at least for engineering on the flood control or one of these projects. We need to do a cost benefit analysis after you'll be uh, right away. Now, we haven't done anything because we can't afford it. That's the cost analysis. There's two the projects. benefit is that you save lives on the flooding, so we, we don't but have the technology. We can't get it into a flood into the 
Region 11, Region 11 flood plan until we get the cost benefit. The catch 22, and then it's their process. We're not very much, we don't have much representation on that board. So, I mean, we've got to get the right of way first. And that's that, that part's easy to understand, right. acquisition. So. And if, no, if we're, just, if we're going to decide we're not going to do a flood warning system ever, put nothing in and most of my precincts get it on Cypress Creek. Like Kendall, yeah, he's paying for that. But there was, I mean, tell you, we get a flood, I can assure you that West Kirk County is going to come unglued by us not having a, doing anything on a flood warning system. And I think, you know, we should. We should do it. And I, uh, John Hewitt. Now, what, why, what do you mean by that? We don't have anything now and never have had anything. No, we do. So the system right now is broken. We have people go out and look and see if the yeah. water's up. Yeah, there's a flood system in there that's run by uh, GBRA. GBRA, but a lot of the sensors were outdated and right. broken. Right. This was supposed to change all that, this thing that uh, Commissioner Moser presented. Right. And GBRA and John Hewitt did the engineering, and then it was just, it's on the shelf now. So if we're just going to say we're not going to do it, we're going to take the money out of the budget, but if we're going to pursue it, we probably need to at least update that. And budget for it. I mean, it's been, it's, you know, it doesn't impact me much. <laughs> so, what's your recommendation? I think we'll put at least 100000 there for the flood warning system so we can update the engineering and try to find out how we get the money because Kendall County was pretty successful. All right. So, let me recap. Make sure I understand it. Right now, we've got a million uh, three, almost a million four uh, in the budget. We're going to take that out and we're going to put two places over 1250 and 1100. Is that what you're proposing? Yeah. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I, I say that if, saying, if we're going to really pursue it. If we're just going to keep money in there and keep talking about this next budget system, I don't see the point. We've gone through this is third, maybe fourth budget season we've done this. If that money just stays there and doesn't get used for some other purpose, I don't see the point. Are, are we including grant for 100000 for the flood warning system as revenue to come in to offset that? At this point, there would not be any revenue coming in. Doesn't the court, I mean, the court doesn't want to abandon a flood warning system. Eventually, that's a very damning statement. I mean, I, well, I, no, but that's, I mean, you've got to put money in there to vote. We have a study that's what, three or four years old. It needs to be updated, and then we can go out and see what funding we can find. That's uh, again. I'm going to say, if we're going to be serious about it, <coughs> yes, keep the money in there. If we're going to do this again next year and say, well, we didn't get around to it, then I don't think we should leave it in there. Harley, I think something we, else with it. I think we can be serious about it by going this route, but we're still trimming up a million dollars though. I get that. I understand that, but you can understand my frustration. I, I haven't heard this as many times as I have. Exactly. Before I, I agree with that, but I think that these be the new thing to me is the Kendall County was able to get funded. And I think that we need to figure out how they did that. Um, and their funding is going to help get part of their account. Yeah. Well, the other factor that I heard was that we've been distracted with the uh, EDAP and sewer project. Have well, help us for we had COVID in there too. Here this summer, yeah. and, and maybe that frees up a little bit more time yeah. and attention. And the other thing that's happened is that the state created the regional flood plan, which, you know, which we had very little representation. And that changed the whole process. And we thought we were in good shape. We thought we were getting projects in it, and then they said no. Because we didn't meet their criteria. We, we turned these projects in. Yeah, we turned them in and they said, no, they don't meet our criteria because we don't have enough engineering or cost benefit analysis. So, we just need to move forward on the flood warning system. Uh, I'm, I'm for that, but I, I hope we can do better than we follow them this next year. Oh, it sounded like maybe we need to get it on the grant radar screen before we get it on the construction or acquisition. Depending what our grant opportunities are. 
Sure. It sounds like we still need to spend a little bit of money on the engineering to be in a position to get it. I agree. Right. Right. That's, that's what you're arguing. Right. Right. Yep. You're saying 215, mm -hmm. whatever. Rather than million. Or three. Yeah. Three. Four. 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 So we all understand the issue. We can discuss it, discuss it later. Anything else? Um, 580 uh, Road and Bridge projects. Um, we've got an area on Goat Creek cut off a ditch that we were going to concrete on that and just with being short staffed and trying to finish up stuff with the East Kirk County Wastewater Project and roads that will need to be redone. <coughs> um, this project has not gotten done. Um, so it's it's carryover um, and there was two thousand one hundred and eight dollars and thirty seven cents carryover from Hewitt engineering project for Sutherland um, and we also had done the fall branch project that were completed in fiscal year 21 22 so this is just this is that ditch that we need to concrete don't know if we'll get to it this year or not um, but it's got an erosion issue and it needs to be concreted in. Is that correct, Trevor? From windmill, uh, the starting point from the windmill down to the uh, main creek down there. Real close to the edge of the roof. That's a problem. Okay, what okay. else, Ellen? Okay, the packet that I gave you all. Um, you go to the legal size piece of paper, the bigger one out of everything. This has got uh, stuff with equipment. Um, these are what we're hoping to get. Um, the top one is purchasing, and the bottom one is based on leasing, based on a five-year lease. Um, if you want to purchase, um, we see the number, and if you wanted to lease, that would be the annual leasing cost for a five-year period. Um, I think we've discussed this before, but we've got a lot of really, really old equipment. Um, starts costing you a lot of money, some stuff 20 years old. I think we even have some 30-year-old stuff. Um, we're trying to get rid of the old stuff, get new in. Um, so you don't have these costly repairs. Some of the stuff you can't even get parts for anymore. Um, so this is kind of the list that of the things that we need to be thinking about um, and getting. So that's that list. Then if you go to <coughs> before we get away from this, mm -hmm. uh, this list that you've got here. Is year two of your long-term plan on replacing equipment? Yes, sir. Okay, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, your top list and, and uh, well, the three items from hold, mm -hmm. are they the same ones on the bottom list? Yes, sir. So, Brush, I guess the, the uh, chipper and the brush truck is not on the bottom list. No, sir. It's a specialty item where it's a it's a unit where you have to buy the cabin chassis and then deal with another entity to purchase the bed. So the, uh, the uh, chipper and the brush truck. Those are not available to lease? We, we can't confirm that they're available to lease. And the thing is, especially with that oil distributor and the chip spreader, they have a lot of electronics in them, just like a lot of the big equipment. And you start having problems about year four, year five, is that correct? I mean, it's, it's, that's correct. With dust and dirt and... <coughs> So we kind of were, uh, kind of talked about it where we probably should be replacing that oil distributor and the chip spreader about every five years. So those two would have to be purchased and the rest can be leased? 
Yes. Well, also the, uh, if you notice on the bottom on the leasing <coughs> side of it is the dump trucks. If we can upgrade our dump trucks and lease them, we can take some of the better trucks that we have now and repurpose them into a brush truck. So we would be able to uh, utilize what some of the newer stuff that we have now. And when I say newer, you're looking at five or 10 years old. Uh, but that's that's the difference a little bit on the brush side of it is why there's a truck on the top and six on, six on the bottom. We can shuffle a little bit. When he's talking about brush truck too, this is the ones that have the enclosed top on it. So when you're shredding stuff and it's blowing into it, um, you're not blowing it all over the place, which we've done not having something enclosed where you can keep that. So if you bought the dump truck, you don't need the brush truck. Six dump trucks. Right. Well, so if you get six dump trucks. Because right now, do we have three brush trucks? There's three located there, yes. Mm -hmm. there, there's three in our, on our property, yes. <laughs> We're talking about purchasing a new one, one new one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're talking about leasing six dump trucks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we were making a little fun here, it was, there's three, two of them are down, which are later on we're talking about, they are going away as far as whether it be an auction or, or sale. Uh, because of the clutches, they're, they're gone. Uh, two of them we can't find parts for, different things like that. Those are some of the trucks that are going away. The hard thing is on the ones that are, have manual transmission, it's hard to find um, people who can drive manual transmission today. <laughs> They're hard to find too. What's that? It's hard to find somebody can drive them. It's hard to find this transmission. Absolutely. <laughs> so you've got uh, so this two purchases and, and the rest you can lease. Mm -hmm. And are they available, Kelly? That's I what? think some of the cat stuff we've had pretty good luck. Yeah. Um, the International, I'm not real sure on those because we just finally got the one that it took us about 18 months to get. Um, yeah. We finally got it. But it's going to be the same difference whether we try to purchase or whether we lease. Yeah, the best so. is the issue. Yeah. Kelly, last uh, commission report, we, we approved a, a purchase that wasn't on our original list a year ago <coughs> that we approved. Um, what what did we have on our list last year and what did we end up getting out of all those it, you know your high priority stuff uh, I, I wish i had this sheet from last year but i, I know sure we had i don't know three or four items on there if i do remember and how many of them were we able to get and uh are they repeated on here we were able to get uh commissioner we were able to get I believe five of the six items. Okay. And a lot of that was due to uh, supply and availability. Oh, I know that. <coughs> yeah. And so we had to kind of be creative and fit our needs. If we were able to find a need, and everything that we purchased this year, we had to trade it. Right. We got rid of the older equipment, and and that that allowed us to make this most recent purchase. We had. Right. We had uh, funds available. So. Well, my, qu my question is, as I look at the budget summary, we've got this million forty-seven uh, oh ninety-seven number, which is what you're saying the purchase price for those uh, three caterpillars and the brush chipper and the brush truck, right? Yes. Now, you're going to lease these things also, is that correct? It's either or, isn't it? Or a lot of it. No. No, it's not. not? Everything on the bottom is new, and the, on the top. Well, the dump trucks we're looking at. Could get rid of the brush truck when we send it to the I I believe if whatever whatever we're we're able to get that the court allows us to get this year, that will be the focus for the following year. Well, one is a capital outlay. Yes, sir. Yes. And that that's the million forty-seven. Yes. Right. And now the other stuff that you're going to lease, that's just going into your operations. Is that what we're funding that in the budget? You're talking on the bottom one? Yes. That would go under leasing. Both of these are included in the maintenance of discipline and operations. It is included? It is included in the budget she has requested. So we're double dipping, double counting right here, at least the three 
Capital. Capital Roads. Okay. Yeah, I thought we determined we buy two off the top list and, and lease the other. It makes the most sense to me. Isn't that so? That comes in at under a million dollars. <coughs> so, on this, is it the dump trucks that would stay under the leasing? And then is that yeah, it? That's the why I think the roar. And then the chip spreader and the oil distributor. Yeah. The so other ones would be purchased, correct? So the purchase is 230000 The 1047 goes to 230 and the 554 is the lease. So you're at 785 too. What we can have is less equipment that we're going to dispose of and eventually get any money for it. We'll buy those two and we have to call back. We'll buy the shipper and the brush truck, which is 230 okay. and then we would lease the <coughs> everything on the bottom portion. Everything? Yeah. yeah. Subject to availability. So we've got so 555 plus 230. Yeah. And, and part of that comes off of the container. The part that's leased would come off and would reduce the budget operations. And the part that's purchased would reduce the capital outlay. Yes. Okay. The part that's leased is in the budget, right? Yes. Yeah, it's in the budget. Yes. And so we're just reducing the capital outlay by whatever difference between 230 and yeah. 1.1. 800,000. We do have in our leasing budget the current uh, trucks that we <clears throat> have received, and we're waiting on one truck, Robert's supervisor truck. But I think that was uh, 140 that was put in on it. Mm -hmm. So that needs to stay. Those are five, six of the trucks are five year lease, and Robert and the shop supervisor trucks, I think at the end of the lease, we'll pay the, we'll pay the $1. And those trucks, those two trucks will keep a little bit longer, but the uh, six others will go and get new trucks. So I didn't hear an answer to my question. If we it, go ahead with this, as we've just discussed, will we have any surplus equipment available? Yeah, I've got a list that, yeah, um, we're that, we're, that we're looking at. We have not <coughs> surplus this yet, um, which would go through Tanya's office. Um, we're Looking at Garrett Auction, I believe the Sheriff's Department has used them before. Um, don't know if we're going to be able to get it done in this fiscal year, but for sure next fiscal year, or maybe this, um, not for sure, but the items that we're looking at doing at the auction, we've got a, a tilt trailer, we've got a 200-gallon oil tacker, a 40-ton Load King haul trailer, uh, a water truck, 1500 gallon water truck, uh, a John Deere 670B with 14 foot mold board uh, maintainer, uh, an old uh, GMC eight yard dump truck, another GMC eight yard dump truck, uh, a GMC was a dump truck, we put a chip box truck on it, that's part of it, um, the Freightliner haul truck, a half ton pickup truck, uh, a John Deere tractor 5510 series, um, another John Deere 5510 series tractor, uh, a single shredder, uh, eight yard dump truck with a side loader box and sander on it, uh, a Neil 250 gallon emulsion uh, trailer, a dual rear <coughs> wheel Ford F350 regular cab pickup, and a Chevrolet 2500 uh, extended cab pickup is going to be on the list for the, the, list for the uh, auction. The, the revenues from this, because we've worked with Tanya on this, they need to go into the road and bridge fund, correct? They do go We're not allowed to done. take this money and use it towards the equipment. You, you can bring it in as revenue and it will go into the general. Which I mean, it still the funds the it. Regular yeah, maintenance and operations mm -hmm. in fund 15. If you're pretty sure of the dollar amount, you know, if, 
the amount you said was seven hundred thousand. That's a two hundred thousand. Oh, two hundred thousand. So, that's just, that's just so a you know, you could take a hundred thousand offset it, and or you would just indirectly it would decrease the amount of transfer that is needed yes. from general fund for this. I'd say put it back on the road bridge general fund. Whatever they right right they now, and um, if you look at your master sheet you'll see that road and bridge with their budget as it is right now is asking for an additional 3.7 million to come from general fund and so if we if they increase their revenues a hundred thousand that 3.6 would decrease to 3.5 right that's what i'm talking about yeah you know on, and on some of the purchases that we've done this year we were able to do trade-ins because kind of like the automotive deal with the used cars, the values, pretty good values. I think that will start to come down eventually. But there is a little caveat on that is it's got to be like items. So you'll hear Tanya um, making sure that it's a like item. So you know if you're looking to trade in a loader, you want to get something that's like a loader. If you're trading in for a, and this is, this is state regulation, if you're looking to get a maintainer, um, you need to be trading in a maintainer. So they, they kind of have your hands a little held on it. We've done really well with some of the trades that we've done, but it's got to be like items. So. Two of these don't equal one of those. Right. That kind of thing. Right. Or three. Yeah. Well, I, I want to clarify with the audit. <coughs> We're going to adjust the number. I'm, I'm looking at the budget summary here. We're going to adjust that million four seven oh uh, four seven oh nine seven number. And we're also going to adjust the three point six six five number. Three point seven is being transferred out of fund balance. If you want to add a hundred thousand in for revenues for the sale of the items that she is going to put up for auction, it would it would increase your non-revenue, the 1.4 million you see in the second column, up to 1.5 million. And then it would make, it would decrease the $3,665,000 down to $3,565,000. Question is whether we want to assume or whether we want to just move forward when the money comes in, put it back in the fund. In other words, budget for what's been requested and then uh, benefit from whether or not she can get a good value for them or maybe not as good as what we would guess. What you're talking about basically cutting in half what your guesstimate is, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I have a hard time envisioning that's up to bring $100,000. I agree with you. I agree with that now. And if this, this all comes to whether we have to increase taxes or not, so I, I think we should go ahead and at least yeah, show 100,000. <laughs> and it's probably going to be a big double Yeah. I mean, that may yeah. be Yeah, exactly. Does the main data run? One of them, I d believe, does. The other <laughs> one. I hear a laugh over here. <laughs> <It's> the other <laughs> one does. That was a dumb one. <laughs> Donnie, does RBU 22 run? Uh, RBU 22 is in. Uh, it was, a, it was a traded in unit. Okay. So the other one is what, 48? 48. And that's the one we're talking about. And that one does run? Sorry. <laughs> the maintainer that runs, that's like 75. It brings more than one that does. I mean, look at the, the new ones are 400. Certainly. Yeah. You can't make that. <laughs> the one we're talking about, I believe that's a 1994. The one that got traded was um, a 1984. Yeah, 84. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. by the way, people will buy somebody. Will buy. So, what, what is your guess on what are they bring in? What, that list? Well, Commissioner, we have a list. We haven't surplus all these items yet. Yeah. We have a list of about 35 items. Yeah. And so, my question remains what do you think you're going to get for those 35 items? I hate to guess. I would, yeah. I would hate to guess, I'm sure. Yeah. Because, because whoever purchases them is going to run into the same roadblock we are. So, see, that's why I don't want us to guess. Yeah. So, I think it's low. His uh, guess is low. We have I'd still rather pay full freight and, and be surprised with a great little windfall later than 
then count on this and then come short of it. Well, some of these trucks, the pickup trucks and stuff, the age of them, they're pretty old. Um, high miles, some 200, 300. I think we've got one. Just like that, all of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, that we really felt might do better at auction because <coughs> most of the, yeah. for a truck, for a truck, a pickup truck, they're like, they're not going to give you anything. They're going to take it over probably over to the crusher and right. put it into a square. Um, so we really figured some of this stuff might be do, do better at auction um, because there are some additional trucks that have already been surplus pickup trucks um, that are in addition to that list that I read off. That has not been surplus yet, but when we're ready, we'll give it to the auditor's office for her to surplus. But just kind of a recap on some stuff. Yeah. Um, what we've done since this is going into year two, like the judge said, as far as figuring out this old equipment, um, we've gotten rid of 16 pieces of equipment in year one, um, 13 pending to remove. Um, we've added 17 new pieces of equipment, and then that list that I read down that we're talking about doing the auction. Um, so, you know, in our one-year period, we've, we've unloaded a lot of old stuff. We still have stuff to do, but um, I think we're making progress. Um, it just will be good to get some of this old stuff that costs so much every time it breaks. And with the newer stuff, we won't be keeping the newer stuff as long as we've done in the past. And that piece of equipment will still have good value left on it when you go to replace it instead of trying to figure out how you're going to get rid of stuff that uh, vendors don't want. Okay, <coughs> let me recap that one. Okay. Of all the things on this agenda, we talked about road bridge, we not talked about county engineer, we'll come back to that after the break. Uh, road district. <coughs> Can we talk about road districts? It's okay. number 20. Okay. And we have, we are, we did talk about flood control. Mm -hmm. Which is that 22. Yes, sir. Okay. So, is there anything else that I need you to present to us now? Um, well, I do have um, the proposed uh, increase for our CDL folks, and that's the 8.5 by 11 sheets that you will, um, that I gave you. There's one that kind of recaps what we're trying to do with those CDL people. Um, we're trying to make it that we look a little more inviting to people to come and fill out an application and want to come and work for Road and Bridge. The two new employees that we have here right now, our shop supervisor, um, kind of was like a little bit of a headhunter and convinced them to come and fill out applications. But as far as somebody coming through our door asking, you know, hey, are you guys taking applications? <laughs> um, that's not happening. Nobody, uh, nobody wants to come in and work for Road and Bridge. Um, what we had found, I think I've shared with the court, that TxDOT, um, Fredericksburg and Kerrville, um, some of our employees that were at entry-level positions hired on with TxDOT, they got a $5,000 hire on bonus, and they were paying between $21 an hour and $24 an hour. That's really hard to compete with that. Um, I had talked to John, I think his last name is Andrade, from Bandera County. He's having the same problem with TxDOT Bandera. Um, he's down seven people where we're down nine people. So he said, I can't compete with TxDOT. So it's kind of where we're at. Um, but what we want to do is um, we put in there, I think it's, uh, let's see which sheet. So this sheet right here, it's kind of hard to see, but it's it's got a little upper part on it. It's got about five or six lines on it. Um, Proposed with three, three, uh, three positions? Yes. Sorry. You go to that, um, if we were to keep all of our budgeted positions that we have, 
and be able to, if we were to get um, applications in, to keep all of our 27 budgeted positions. Um, this is what you would be looking at at the bottom, would be the increased cost. It'd be $113,581.51. That's with not giving up any of our positions. If you go over to the right, we would be willing, I mean, of course, we don't want to, um, we'd love to have the first one, but that may not be possible. Um, we're willing to freeze three of our road maintenance tech positions. Um, still have them, but we would not hire in them. And either for a time period or, you know, we've kind of kicked this around, um, the two crew chiefs and I, you know, with all of the new developments coming in, you know, maybe on that first position when the court has accepted 10 new miles of maintenance for new roads from a new development, we would get permission to be able to go out and hire in that one position that's been frozen. Um, but we're willing to freeze three positions, not get rid of them, but freeze them that we will not be able to hire in those um, in order to do the increase um, for our CDL holders. Um, to maybe, it still isn't gonna match up with TechStop, but it's gonna get you closer to TechStop. Um, so does that difference include all the changes on the page? <coughs> Where you have the change in grade from 80 to 20. And yes. Includes to the 113,000. Yes. Yeah. If we do the three frozen, it actually would have a surplus um, of $8,465.69. So instead of having nine open positions, obviously we would have six open positions. And we wouldn't hire on those three. We just, we don't want to delete those three positions and you know I think you all know this once you get rid of them and I think most people sitting in this room will um, agree it's hard to get them back. When you say three, how did you come up with the number three? We first did the increases and figured out <coughs> how many positions we would need to do in order to cover it to get it as I'm, close. How many are you running? One. Mm -hmm. And we normally it was five for five work areas. Now we're we're down to one big bigger crew. Yeah. But um, <coughs> this gives you all the upgrades that you need. Yes. Yes. And freeze three positions, and it's essentially where he. Yes. And like I said, we didn't. We just threw out the idea of possibly, you know. Court accepts 10 new miles, you know, one of those um, freezes. Or if one of you have a better, a better idea. We're going to try not to take on anymore, working with kids and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, if the court, if we didn't take, you know, any more in, and the court wanted to say five years on the first one, you know, after five years we can rehire in that one position and keep going down. Um, we just, we want to be able to compete with TechStone, and we want to be able to keep employees. I still have, it's a past employee that works out of the Fredericksburg office. Um, he still is contacting our current employees, trying to get them to leave Redden Bridge and go to the Fredericksburg TechStone office, which, I mean, there's no law against it, but it doesn't make you very happy when you hear that. Well, I mean, I'm in favor of, our, of the increases. I'm a little concerned about Freezing the staff. I know, I mean, you can say you can get back. I certainly wouldn't want to do it. I mean, not, I could get maybe freeze too. I just think that people, you know, you have holidays, you have people get sick, you have overtime. If I ever, if I cut the staff, we're going to increase all those other items. So are we really gaining much? Yeah. But to me, I'd rather, I'd rather just not, not freeze it. Try to keep full staff because this department of sheriffs, they're the ones that hit us hard on overtime. Um, if there's an ice storm, they gotta be out. And they have to, if they're already short staff, um, it's hard for them to take comp time or if they make we make them take comp time, then they can't get work done. So 
we're not gaining anything. I'm sure the sheriff's department is the same way, but it is a real rarity. It happens every once in a while that we have every employee at work. Every day we have somebody off at least one. Going into this, we knew that Road and Bridge and our sheriff's department are the ones parts hit that people are stealing our people. Uh, and fairly easily because of salaries. You know, another thing just to add in here, you know, we're starting to get a lot of phone calls on the right of way mowing. Well, <laughs> Robert has gone out and he's mowing, but, you know, that's another responsibility that we do along with, you know, brush cutting, chip sealing, patching, you know, all of that. You know, you don't it's go just, it's getting to a point that there's not enough people and what we have. If we were to lose any more than what we've got, um, it, it'd be pretty <coughs> devastating. These two departments are unique in that, and I've talked to a lot of people, they're, they're worried about what we're doing this year. And I've told them, I said, my biggest worry is these two departments I just discussed. And they realize that. People realize that, hey, when you call in the sheriff's office, you want somebody to show up. When you have road problems, stuff you want to fix. They realize that. Um, maybe they don't understand some of the other departments, you know, when they ask for raises and stuff like that compared to these. And uh, I think even the sheriff is, I'm dragging him into this, but we discussed some of the other people in his department that know the ones out there in patrol are the ones we need most help with. And the people understand that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I want to ask you a question. I just want to be real practical. Uh, these RMT positions that you're talking about freezing. Mm -hmm. Realistically, are we going to be able to fill those positions with what their present second grade is? No, sir. No. That's what I thought. Well, we kind of looked at it, even the nine that were, were short. And, and I would be shocked if we filled nine positions. And, um, I, and I, would, I want to commend your creativity, take a look at this and being realistic about it, and offering those freezes because uh, de facto, that's what's going to happen. You're not going to fill those positions. No. <coughs> and you're looking for a way to be able to upgrade your department or you requested without an adversely affecting county finances. No. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Really well, good. Donnie and Robert and Rosa, uh, we kind of brainstormed and uh, came up with something that maybe we could offer kind of back to the court um, to do this. And, um, and, I, and I hear what Commissioner Lance is saying. But realistically, if we got to the point where we needed another, we're going to have to give them a seventh grade increase in yeah. So, why are we really losing here? But, we're, yeah. but the increase, if you do what's on page, the third page, that gives them a seventh grade increase. That gives all your employees yes. increase. Well, well, our CDL. Oh, your CDL. Yeah. yeah. So. so, I mean, the, so the RMTs aren't CDLs? The, no, they. We, yeah. We've started to hire them without a CDL, just to have somebody who wants to come and work for us, and then we're sending them through our driver entry level training um, that we've been successful. That, that young man will be brought up to a 15, so all of our RMT positions are budgeted as 15, <coughs> but if you don't have a CDL when we hire you, you start out at a 14. We're not going to pay you as much until you get that CDL. So. So what, what All of those positions to, be at, to actually attract and be able to hire somebody as an RMT. Well, like I said, the ones that left here that were RMTs went to Textile, and they're making a couple of them are making twenty-one dollars an hour, and one of them that just recently left that's going to Fredericksburg. I asked him, you know, what are they going to start you out at? He told me twenty-four dollars an hour, and these these people were RMTs. They weren't heavy equipment operators. Um, they weren't crew leaders. They weren't crew chiefs. They were our entry level positions, and they were hired anywhere from twenty one to twenty four dollars an hour. What's a, what's a fifteen? Seventeen seventy eight, I believe. Seventeen seventy eight yeah. an hour. Essentially, what we did, Commissioner, we we trained these people. We got them their CDL back before the right. Uh, yeah, before the world changed. And we got them two years of experience, which is all they need to move on to textile. So 
So that's it's very attractive when you're making seventeen seventy eight or eighteen dollars an hour, and you get twenty one or twenty four throw it at you. It's you really can't blame them, but what's we can? But you know, we're talking about the seventeen starting seventeen up. I'm not I'm not sure. Well, it's going to be five percent higher. We're a training ground for everybody else. In the long term, that really hurts us because we end up with new people all the time. We're going to be better off paying more and teaching for you. That's where we used to be. I've heard the same thing from many departments that sitting here. Two of them right there in the second row. That people get training and then move on because they've been well trained here. And they're qualified now to get a higher paying job. That's true in place in every place. So. Well, and... You know, for a lot of the younger ones, and this was discussed, I think, recently, Kerr County has unbelievable benefits, and I thank you all for the benefits that we have. Um, that $2.30 for every dollar, that's unheard of, you know. Um, but when you're young, yeah. it means nothing to you. Bottom it's, line. Bottom line is, what are you going to pay me an hour? Um, you as you get older, you start to realize that those <clears throat> benefits really, really play an important role role but when they're young most of them they don't care about any of that I've had older employees or older people inquire because they want the benefits that's what they're more worried about is the benefits so we're taking if we go to 17 it's 18 67 an hour the 17 right now pays 1963 an hour. The 1963? Yeah. Oh, 17. Yeah. Oh, 17? The grade 17 pays 1963 an hour. What's that do overall? Well, it just gives for going up. I mean, the tech stock, people are paying 21, so it's stopped if you're not And Russell, where would that, that, that budget? going up to a 19, Perfect. where would that then put that? Well, his question is, what is the student budget? And I think what Kelly's telling us is that if she does not fill these three fifth positions, whether it's the frozen or just not fill them, yeah. she can do this within the budget that we have. Mm -hmm. we, if we, we accommodate mm -hmm. these increases with, from the CDLs. She can do all of that with the budget she has without having to do this. Your people hire things. There would actually be about an eight thousand dollar surplus in there. Yeah, that's yeah. that that's smoke and mirrors for what we need. Though. Yeah, I you know I thought more uh, interested in reaching them for six months, <laughs> seeing where you are, see if you're able to hire people, okay. and then we can look at them in six months. If you have freeze them, you can have to hire people. You can have freeze them in six months. Well, I'm not sure he's doing that right now. What's that? How many RMPs do we have right now? One. Uh, <laughs> two, actually. Two. Filled, yes, or, filled or vacant? Filled or vacant? Filled. filled. How many positions? Two. Just two positions? Two filled that positions. Filled. Two filled positions. How many unfilled? Nine. Okay. So full staff is 11? On the RMP. On the RMP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you're we're a total one. of 27. We were 28, and we got our shop supervisor more money last year, so we gave up a position. <clears throat> so to recap, what did we call these people? Frozen, we freeze the positions, we just don't fill the positions. Uh, you can do all that within our existing budget. That's good. Second thing, uh, if we did do the freeze, can't we undo the freeze? Yeah, sure. I'll go back down. So whether we freeze it or not, we know that it's a fluid decision at this point. Right. Uh, and depending on what happens next month, next year, we can make change. Yeah. Well, we we'll give you the flexibility. Do you, does she have to get permission from the courts to, to do a freeze if she can't fill them in? Well, if well, we freeze it, we if we yeah. if we 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 we have to approve it. Yeah. Okay. And she says, if we approve this, then she can do that by not filling those three positions, whatever we call it. Well, I'd like to see her get a better inkjet thing. <laughs> so let's put that in the budget so I can actually read this page. I've been staring at it, wondering what they're talking about. So, I think it's good. 
I think we all understand it. Understand it, but I, I, I think she needs, they got too many babies. Yes. And uh, I, I think they need to be addressed. Well, I think the way she's addressing the babies, this just my take on it, is <coughs> hire them without the CDL, put them in our training program, yeah. get them a CDL, yeah. uh, and give them a higher pay. Yeah. So we bring them, we train them, we get, they get certified, and we pay them more. Yeah. Works. Yeah. It's but if we pay for that, we need a commitment out of that. We need a certain mm -hmm. amount of time committed. That's yeah. the way they do the bonus pay. Right. I. To yeah, me, that would be a legal question. That would be a legal question. I'd, I'd love to have it, but I just don't le know legally if you can do that. Especially you, can. you can. The sheriff knows you can. Okay. Not even. He um, does it. Other, you know, if you say we're going to give you CDL training and we require 18 months out of your three years or whatever it is in return, plus you get paid while you're learning. I don't see why we can't do that. Uh, and retain some of them. Rosie, your cause all you do is get them to agree to refund the cost that you applied. I know yeah, in the past when you've done prorated. You know, I know in the past when you've done at least we when I first hired on at Road and Bridge, I got a letter that said it was like a six month probation period and we were told somewhere along the line you can't do that because you're you're guaranteeing employment <coughs> for six months. So I don't know on this if if it would be the same thing, you know, I... It's wordsmithing. Yeah. At grade 17, would you be able to hire additional RMPs? I think it... We, we might have an opportunity to find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't know. Never been there, you know. I'd like to see you have the opportunity to find out, too. <clears throat> I have one more thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> we want to do a stipend. For our shop supervisor, it should be in there. I'm not sure which page. Uh, I asked Robert and Donnie to come up with what he thought would be what they thought would be fair. Uh, it's I think um, yeah, it's on this page. It has the squares running down it. The very last one. This is the guy that um, got Road and Bridge set up for the entry-level driver training, which is a very strict criteria. Um, like I said, the school districts, they thought they were set up, they weren't. Um, he said, you know, hey, let's just try this one employee, see if we can't get him through it. Um, like I said, I think it was about a week or two ago, he completed the driving test, he's got his CDL now. They came up with a proposed $1,500 added um, as a stipend for him and for every new hire that he gets through this program and we figured maybe three employees is maybe what we'd be able to hire maybe it'll be more um, but we started out with fifteen hundred dollars for every employee that he successfully gets through this program and they have CDL in hand um, he would get a five hundred dollar stipend payment because it does take time out of his schedule we do have the computer set up out in the uh, office of the mechanic shop is <laughs> still having to get all the oil changes and all the repairs done and along with this so we figured um, some sort of incentive um, because we're not having to send our employees to truck driving school at six six thousand to ten thousand dollars a person there's a pretty big savings in what what we're doing right now so if I understand it correctly, Kelly, you're talking about putting fifteen hundred dollars in there, but you're projecting maybe three a year. That's kind of what Robert and Donnie so, okay. came okay. up with. Just to start uh, somewhere, we it. don't want to put a large, a huge amount, and then right. it, we only maybe hire you know two employees okay. in that. <laughs> um, and that way. There's an incentive for him. He didn't just take on a whole other job that, um, that he would get some sort of thank you for what he's doing. And he's the one that came to me and said, hey, 
would you mind if I look into what all it really is going to take for us to do it in-house and not have to send somebody to a school and see if see if I hit any snags and uh, the only snag we ran into is because he's the trainer he has to have a current DOT medical card which when you're local government you can um, sign up for an exemption for the medical <coughs> card as long as you're driving a county vehicle um, he had to have that so we went and sent him to get his med card go through the physical and everything and I paid for it out of I think like contingencies or something that was the last thing that he had to do he had to have the DOT medical card so I said we can pay for that no other certification no I don't really it's the class A and, uh, and I think anything any of the endorsements that you're teaching you have to have that certification so the endorsements that we currently require is the, um, the water truck. I don't think that's the What's that? And the standard manual transmission. Used to be you got your CDL and it covered you on the transmissions. In today's world, if you take it in an automatic transmission dump truck, your license says I can only drive automatics. If you take it in a manual transmission, <coughs> Dump truck, you can drive any of the, the rest of the stuff, so. Well, it seems like you come up with a creative way to solve the problems. And it seems like this guy's the linchpin to it. <coughs> I haven't got any problem with pushing the question. Anything else you need to talk to us about? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 520. 120. Road districts, they should be oh. quick. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, totally new down, so yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it, but I'm still very concerned about freezing positions. On the, I think it's going to have a negative impact on getting work done, and I'm, not, I'm against freezing them. I understand they may not be filled, but I don't mind budgeting for them less, but I'd rather not be, because I think it will be hard to fill. It takes some time to fill them all, but I would rather not freeze any. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, they struggle with hiring people and stuff, but move on so you get bring the applicants that are decent and they're going out. There's one I'm trying to have to compromise with that. That's okay too. Well, if, if she's given permission to freeze it, uh, <coughs> that doesn't mean that she can't hire somebody else, does it? But she has to come back to the back to the and freeze it. I would like to see her actively recruit. <coughs> exactly. So, she, if, we, if we say you have permission, one, let me finish, positions. please. If you have permission to to do what you're requesting, uh, you're saying she automatically has to come back to the court to request to hire people beyond this. If I'm not free, sure that we can't give her permission all at once. Just take out the freeze part. Yeah. Yeah. To limit that and, and to not, whatever wording we so, need. So I'm trying to clarify for Kelly. Mm -hmm. so you can't get there. We're talking about leaving, for the time being, voluntarily leaving three good positions unfilled. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a recruiting center. Yes. So my the real question is 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 there some kind of a, a Kirk County policy or state law that requires you to if you are able to fill every position. You're not going to be able to do it anyway. So I, I, I'm a little bit at a loss of why we have to decide there's a freeze versus her just saying I'm not going to hire anybody right now. It's a budget it's a department. If, if we if it's not frozen, we'll put money to the budget for that position. Right. I think we I would rather be realistic in our budgeting and say, you know, reduce our salary line item couple of positions because we're not going to, you are, we're never going to have to be 100% full. Right. The same as the sheriff's department. So uh, we over budget, which is why we end up surplus, which is not a bad thing either. Because we, right. it can't be if everybody fun. does it, it's a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. It's more of a budget. I don't, my preference would be not to freeze them, let her move forward. And I think we address what we're going to do on either contingency or salary or something like that from a budget standpoint. 
monies that is available with Ingram Hills that is 41,160 in Oak Ridge 5,280 um, that's the only information that I personally have with road district um, in fund 20 is that from two years ago I think so and I think what was said was the only way that was I guess an overage when those so road districts were done when when they pay off their debt and there's people that haven't paid their taxes yet when that money comes in it goes into fund 20 but it has to be restricted for the district that was originally paying for that note and so any repairs that are done anything as it's being done can be charged to fund 20 instead of roading bridge but we, the money has been building up. I don't know what it is right now. Those were that we answer. have looked at it in the past, just to say you've got that much money, but there hasn't been any that's being charged there so far. Well, and I've told the two crew chiefs, they know these two road names that when we get ready to do the work on these two roads, then that's when we will be letting the auditor know that and the information that's provided is that we've got uh, forty-four thousand one hundred dollars for Ingram Hills Road District. Is that right? That's so you—that's how much they ask for. So are you still asking for that, or is it still going to remain zero? I don't think we've asked. We haven't asked we for have anything. That's, a, we've that's driven by the percent. Yeah, these were the amounts, and Tanya, I think they might have come from. Um, in your office. I've looked at it since then and we've had an email on it so I, I I just don't recall what the email was it was over a year ago yeah they've got the money there but if they're choosing not to use it then it should be zero if there's a possibility they're going to use funds for any of those registers it needs to have a budget behind it yeah. okay. well what I'm seeing yeah. on the budget summary that I keep referring to here is that we reflect $24,100 of income uh, on road districts, and then we budget that amount so that it's available to be spent. We, that is just expenditures. We've got it in fund balance right now, and that's if they spend the amount of money this year. We can look at it and bring it back. And I don't think, think we have any plans for it. I think it's a wash. Yeah. Okay, anything else on, on road districts? No. Nope. Let's take a five minute break. <laughs>
Next time on the agenda is County Engineer. Okay. Case number 601. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Um, I did pass out uh, just a map that shows those three drainage locations that we were discussing earlier. Uh, I sketched this a little while ago to remind myself of what where these were. Um, I know we talked about it a moment ago, but just for the public, uh, there's three areas on Highway 27, Sutherland, Coldwell, and Willow Bend, uh, that the, uh, the drainage pipes going under the highway uh, have historically not been big enough to handle the stormwater going under. When TxDOT rebuilt Highway 27, they added additional culvert pipes at those locations, but there's still, the, the choke point is past those culverts also. There is not a means for that water to get to the river quickly, so instead it backs up at all those locations. So at such time that we have um, uh, drainage channels, uh, ditches, culvert pipes to get it all the way to the river that will flow more effectively. Uh, that's where that project stemmed from. There has been discussion in this court through the years of whether or not this really should be a TxDOT project or a county project. Uh, I'm just an engineer in the middle that just wants to see the water get where it needs to go uh, and I'll do what the, what the court tells me to do. But uh, there you go. That's where we're at on that. Again, uh, the this past year, there was there was money budgeted to acquire right of way for these because the engineering was far enough along. I can tell you, my office hasn't worked on it at all uh, since uh, the budget year started in October one. We spend four days a week on average uh, doing inspections uh, for all of the new development that's going on. Uh, that's not just the sewer project. Sewer project doesn't take near as much time. It really is the development that just inundated our office um, starting in 2021 and carrying all the way through 2022. So if we move on to uh, my budget, I've got a couple of line items uh, that I'd like to talk about. Um, line item uh, 315's books, publications, and dues. I put an additional $100 in there over the uh, recommended and uh, that was to make sure there was enough <coughs> money in there to cover all the different organizations that we're part of. One of them is the National Association of County Engineers, which the past two years we, we didn't pay our dues. We, we just didn't do it. Uh, part of that was because of uh, how the world changed with COVID and whatnot. There were some conferences that they just didn't have. Um, the other is uniforms. As Kelly mentioned uh, earlier, uh, uniform prices went up uh, about 25% and um, uh, Road and Bridge has been kind enough to help our department uh, make sure and cover those fees, but we wanted to budget uh, the appropriate amount. Uh, so that line item is uh, 316 and an additional $800 to make sure we've got enough money in there for a full year of uh, uniform service. I have uh, passed out a uh, memo that I gave uh, to the uh, judge and to the County Auditor, as well as the HR Director, um, which kind of describes the situation and thing I'd like to talk about uh, moving forward with the Engineering Department. We are a two-man department. Um, as you know, uh, this two-man department for Kirk County Engineering Park, we work very hard to keep pace with the tremendous growth that Kirk County has experienced. We went from an average of 10 new lots per year to over 1,000 lots in one year brand new lots that are being built on the ground uh, by developers. Um, I've been reluctant to expand the department thinking this growth would be short-lived. Uh, however, we've reached the breaking point. Uh, we can no longer provide the level of service this community expects and demands. Uh, I propose a systematic approach that will involve short and long-term actions associated uh, budgetary impacts and we'll need the help of the court at appropriate times. I think phase one can be handled in budget year 2023-24 with very minimal impact to the budget. Uh, I'd like to uh, take the floodplain administrative duties and transfer them to the engineering assistants. Uh, it will require uh, that uh, the engineering assistant maintain certified, certified uh, flood 
flood, floodplain manager status will require adjustment, adjustments to the salary. Uh, can be accomplished with a minimal impact to the budget. What I'd like to do is uh, reduce line item uh, 570, capital outlay, uh, take that balance and add, add it to the salary for the um, uh, floodplain, new floodplain administrator, the, my assistant. <coughs> that would be line item 103. Uh, I'd also like to expand our existing 12-week summer intern program uh, to 16 weeks um, as a pilot program. Um, we do a 12-week program because 12 weeks works great over the summertime uh, for a summer intern. If we went to top 20, uh, they can still do it. Uh, we may need to do some of that like later in the year, maybe in the, in the winter, maybe four weeks in the winter. Um, but. Uh, if it's, it's successful, I'd like to in, expand it over time each year, come back to you and add another four weeks for an ultimate 24-week uh, program, which would be equivalent to two, maybe having two summer interns or, or one summer intern that works for the summer, but also or maybe a different intern that works in the fall or the spring. Uh, we have a summer intern right now. He's a Shriner student, civil engineer major, very, very bright. Uh, we've been able to put him on some things that um, my assistant and I like to do the engineering nerdy stuff that we don't get to do because we're busy doing other things and uh, he's doing them anyway uh, for us uh, having all the fun doing all the engineering calculations but um, that would be an increase to line item 108 uh, by uh, $1,740 that's the equivalent of uh, four weeks for a summer intern it is part-time it's 29 hours a week max um, then uh, we'd also third-party inspection services it will require a request for qualifications to hire a provider we would need to go through an RFQ at some point um, we will require budget approval by the court uh, engineering fees will cover cost of inspections we charge engineering fees right now for uh, subdivisions all the subdivisions we did last year didn't pay any engineering fees we didn't have them that was something new as part of uh, last year's budget and also adopting the new subdivision regulations. But um, I, so I don't know how to show that in the budget. Uh, I, I don't know if you do a projected income, uh, a, a projected expenses, or if it just, you just do budget amendments anytime a subdivision comes in. Uh, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure how to do that, but I, I just want to make sure that the court knows I think that's where we need to head for inspection services. As I mentioned before, last year I think we spent about four days a week in the field just doing inspections. And uh, there's only five in a week. Uh, we've been able to, uh, because a lot of developments are, are starting to wind down, they're, they're, they've got the heavy, the heavy lifting's done as far as uh, building roads, putting the drainage in now. Some of them are only in establishing vegetation. My office doesn't need to go out there and watch the grass grow. Uh, so we're down to two, two days a week where we're doing inspections for this year. Um, that'd be nice if that was uh, gonna sustain like that for uh, moving forward in the future, but we still are just a two-man department and it would make sense to have a third-party um, inspector that would be used on, on a just as needed basis and it would be paid for through the fees that we we are collecting from what kind uh, from of qualifications would you need for that um, if we did a request for qualifications for that uh, it would be for um, uh, engineering inspection services construction inspection services so for get development a, we'd have a retainer kind of contract with them for yes a year at a time to be renewed or what do you anticipate? I think so uh, probably you know, we may want to do it for more than a year if we find if we find one that we really like and we've got a good working relationship we just renew uh, those uh, services every year I guess renew a contract or, or sign a contract that says this is what we're going to do and tell we need to move on and part part ways auto renewal with like a 90 day out or something like that, is that what you're talking about? I'm not I'm not real sure I haven't ever done it before but uh, but I can find out I can find out what other maybe other counties are doing and, Bring something. <coughs> Charlie, the uh, the bulk of our subdivisions have private roads. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of them on county roads, county maintained roads. Uh, 
What's your thought, you probably not going to like this idea, but what's your thought of not inspecting those roads? We're not responsible for them. We want them to, we just have the engineer that designs them, have that engineer sign off that they were built accordingly, and, and we just don't do those inspections. And then we, what we would do in that case is, is um, review, maybe do some spot inspections, but not be out there every single time. Uh, and uh, just so we have a feel for what's going on and we would need for them to provide us the results of any of their density testing that they're having done by a lab. Uh, so it's a certified lab that's sending these testing results. Uh, uh, so it would, it, would, it would take us from being out in the field and we'd be able to handle that in the office. Uh, that would be up to the court if that's what the court wants to do. I would be in favor of going in that direction. And the main reason is these roads, <laughs> however they're built, um, once they're done, we don't go out there. We're not responsible for the repairs of them. So, I mean, we want them to be built to a standard, uh, but for us to spend a whole lot of manpower inspecting them, it seems to me that it's not necessary. Um, I think also because the court recently has taken the stance that um, do we really want to be taking on any more new roads unless they're providing some kind of a benefit to the whole community? If it's just the road that's coming off of uh, the highway and going into the subdivision and there's really no connector, um, then you're less, if, if you're right now not, you're saying we don't want to take over the maintenance of that, then um, in the future, 20 years later, you still probably wouldn't want to take that road over. Right. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not on the same page as my good friend, <laughs> Precinct 4. I think that there is a benefit in paying taxes. So if they want to, um, let the county to take over those roads, I think we need to continue as we're doing. And I think we should accept a road that's built to our standard. Um, it does more work for our road bridge department, but these people, if they choose to, they're, they're paying tax. They're taxpayers like everybody else, and they, that should be. Right. For whatever reason, most people, it appears, most developers appear to not want roads to be maintained by the county. And we accept very few roads, um, almost all private roads. All the, main, all the larger subdivisions we're looking at in recent years have all been private roads. So it's just a way to save, cut back your, I know your staff is, is overworked. Um, and to me, I, I like your plan. I'd probably want to move up your new hire sooner. Um, and I'd like to maybe see if you and Kelly could work out uh, more specifics on the expansion of that building, how it would be done, um, and the cost. So we can start looking at that. Um, but one option may be not be in support of not doing the full inspections on private roads. And I think it's important that we continue to do some inspections, so maybe we target 20% yeah. so that they may never really know. They have to advise us of every time they're going to go out. Yeah, um, and, and then of course there's still a, a final review. Any reports that come in, you know, guys should still take a look at it, but it would reduce the workload for you. I'm yes, I'm okay that's with good. that. Yeah, that's good. Charlie, you correct me <coughs> if I'm wrong, but you know I've gone out with y'all on some of these inspections and stuff, and uh, golly, it seems like overkill as far as maybe you and Bobby and then Kelly and two or three road crew chiefs or something, you know, we get a lot of manpower out there. It mm -hmm. seems like we could do with less, you know, either or, your partner or Kelly's or whatever, right. you know, all this stuff, uh, <coughs> just my two <coughs> the, the one that you witnessed was a road that um, that is maintained by the county and was going to be maintained right. after, so they, they wanted all hands on deck to make sure everyone was on, on the okay. same page. <coughs> so, uh, little, that was an ounce of cure. Yeah. And, and I'll agree with Commissioner Lynch, given our arm page as far as uh, taking on new county mm -hmm. roads and, and what have you. And I think, you know, we're going to look hard at the pits going forward, hopefully. Well, what I've presented to you so far, and for the public, they didn't hear the rest, but that was just phase one. Phase one was for this year. Uh, but phase two would be building expansion for the I'm suggesting effective budget year 2026-27, uh, expansion of existing engineering office. We have two rooms right now. 
Uh, we really need a, a plan room also the Lord, to, to house the Lord, large format scanner copier, flat <coughs> vertical files, review tables, drafting tables. If you've been in my office, you know where those those files are right now, all the plans. They're, I can't open some of my drawers anymore because there's plans stacked up everywhere. It's not a place to put them. Uh, office space needed for one additional staff and entry level engineer is what we would be looking for. That would be phase two. Um, but phase two can't happen unless we have a building. Right now, we're, we're, we don't have space. Uh, and phase three would be staff expansion from two to three, effective budget year 2027 20, 28, entry level engineer. So these are just long term goals. Uh, gosh, Bobby and I would love it if we never had to expand, I have to be honest. Um, we're, we're very hesitant to do that, but I just don't see an end to what's been going on. So, I think the, the building was originally built for expansion, so expansion is not that difficult to do a reconfiguration. It's <coughs> planned to expand to the east, have that door as well, that's going to work there. Um, and so, Figure out, I'd get with Kelly, figure out how much space you need. And uh, <coughs> in an expansion, you could probably do a more like a conference type room, and then y'all could take over the current conference room. That'd be an option. Let's look at all the options on the way. When we have a new animal control shelter, we'll have that uh, building that uh, Reagan and his team are currently occupying. It's actually a very nice office space. Yeah. 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 Temporary, but I mean, it's got at least a 20 year life. Uh, property maintained, and it could, there's, there's a lot of room in the road and bridge yard to set something like that. So, just throwing that up, consider that as an option. So, something I could do is put on a, one of the agendas here in the near future would be that request for qualifications for the inspection services, and then we could. And then we can see what's out there uh, and and select select what whichever one is the most qualified and then find out what do you charge for this kind of stuff and and then see how that would line up with um, moving forward so, okay. I like that idea. just yeah, a step at a time uh, but we don't need anything in this year's budget on that not for that, no sir. And again, that would be paid for with engineering fees that we collect from already, engineering and inspection fees. So but we may need to see money to pay them and then collect the fees. So. Yes, sir. That's not in this budget year, so it's not, we won't worry about that. Okay. It could be. It, it could be. It could be. I don't know how, how county, counties handle that. Well, if you have a retainer, you're paying somebody, and then you have a good year with inspections, everything's fine. But if, if they go down, uh, and it's not paying for itself, then we'd have to bring it back and look at it again. Yes, sir. And we'd have that flexibility. Yeah. We'd have a lot of flexibility. Okay. Very good. Anything else, Charlie? Uh, no, sir. That, that's it. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Parks Committee. What day was that? Sorry. 5.13. Right. 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 Let's see. Equipment, I'm sorry, 513, 5, uh, 456, equipment repaired. Uh, I'm only asking for a 5% increase, and that's the only increase in 513 I'm asking for. That yeah, much like a $600, $600 increase? Yeah, it's 5% like five, 5 for that. I don't see why we can't absorb that. Anything else in parts maintenance? Looks good to me. Thanks, Shane. All right. Okay. Uh, Courthouse related to 510. 510? Yes, yes, sir. We'll, we'll have 510 and also 511. Okay. 510 is <coughs> the related buildings? Yes, the related buildings. And 
316 uh, is asking for another 5% for uniform, right. uh, uniform cost going up. And the next one on the, my agenda would be uh, 510. Before you leave that one, sorry. Sir? Before you leave, four <laughs> house related. We're looking at moving some departments around. We're not sure how that's all going to sort out yet. But there will be some building costs to do that in any, any scenario we're looking at right now. Uh, we need to put some funds in here for that type of work. I mean, it looks, I don't know where the contract fees, I mean, 10,000 does not go very far if that's the line I've been dealing with. Uh, how, how, how much of a, a project are we talk about? Are we moving who and, and where, where are we moving on? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're probably going to be having to do some work at Project Earl Garrett sometime in the next budget year, and I'll be putting in doors. Um, somewhere and you know we're not sure yet and we're not sure who's coming there but there's definitely going to be some, some doors put in to separate some areas and, and basically changing hallway not changing hallways but doors in hallways so that people can't go in and out as much right up out there um, there may be work uh, up in Ingram uh, at the new annex and then, do we want to put all that in this line? Well, I don't know where it goes, but it, we need to account for it somewhere. It's it's line, yeah, but I think it maybe ought to be in the other lines. Would, would that be a capital outlay problem or a line item? I don't know, Tanya. Tanya? Well, I'm just looking at the budget here. Yeah. The yeah. Index has RM at. Uh, what? Well, yeah, for the, the Ingram Annex, we already had 10000 in that. All that that is, is it didn't touch that. Their OPX got 4000 um, Do we have anything for the courthouse property? Uh, 450 the 510 450 I did, I, I'm asking for another 5% increase in the courthouse budget. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at the previous two budget uh, cycles, I've I won over 80000 Last year's requested budget that I had, that I had was seventy-six thousand for the, the courthouse. And that may be enough. I don't know. We don't know what we're doing for sure, but we need to maybe just put in contingency and have it there. But this is we're going to have expense. That, that's right. I'm just looking at the contingency for every piece of minor expenses. <laughs> Depending on what the projects are, we also have a fund called Permanent Improvement. Um, it is Fund 70. So I don't know the projects that are showing on here. I do not think there's actually a plan for it. It's just what's left in the fund balance. And that's if we spend 100% of what's budgeted in the current year. Um, I can bring that back at a later date. And discuss it, but if it's if it's doors that are going in there permanently, then we might use funds out of that, out of there. Yeah. Um, I think any of these items would be permanent improvements that I'm talking about. And is there money in that fund now? There is money. Ninety-five hundred dollars. But that ought to ever so raise that. What would you say? Ninety-five hundred. Ninety-five hundred. Yeah. It's a good start. It's a start. It's something. Is, it's, I, I actually think there's more money in there. It's just there was money budgeted for this year that has not been spent, so there may be additional funds in there also. It's just hard to project. That's just what I put in my budget. So that's our built into the budget. Plus these other, other funds. I think mean, we've got enough probably. We have one major contingency fund. We have, we don't have enough for these little ones. Yeah. It's all out there. Okay. That's uh, I agree. Thank you, good shame. All right. And then also the juvenile detention repairs. Uh, I'm asking for another 5% uh, for the juvenile detention. That is uh, 510 and 451. In the last two budget cycles, I've been uh, running around uh, over 20,000 in that, that line item as well. Thank you. Well, out. And one more for the uh, 
510, 550, uh, another 5%. The, the uh, major repairs, that, that, that covers can cover multiple buildings. That can cover the courthouse, the uh, road and bridge, uh, Ingram, it can cover, help, also cover the 550 building. So if we have any major repairs like AC repairs, that, that can help kind of cover. I think these 5% increases that you've done give you a cushion uh, being at least start what we need there. Okay. We need more with them than that. Yeah. I'm good with that. <coughs> And uh, <coughs> that's about the uh, five or five ten five eleven. Which one? Five eleven. Jail maintenance. Uh, all right. Jail, the actual jail repairs five eleven four fifty one. I'm also asking for another. Uh, five percent. Uh, and you also notice uh, past uh, budgets that I've, I've gone over the eighty thousand mark, kind of significant. <coughs> and it's just for uh, to help out with it, I, I just also had to spend eleven thousand on a, a new boiler just a couple months ago. But, uh, that was a pretty pretty significant hit. Well, so you put that nine thousand down there for major repairs. Yes, sir. For uh, you know, major repairs. Yes, sir. To kind of help cover that because I'm way short on my budget for the for the jail budget right now, and, and something like the uh, uh, major repairs would help help significantly with that. So somewhere I'm gonna have to do a budget adjustment to to, to get some of that money back in my mind. Okay. Do you have anything else on the, on the agenda here? Else in the Before we let escape, where are we at as far as uh, personnel? Uh, how many vacancies do you have? Just one. Just one. And Commissioner Letts had come up with a good idea and we discussed it a couple, starting a couple of years ago about just having a strictly uh, lawn maintenance and stuff. We got so many campuses, especially going in the heat room one with you know, close to five acres, a lot of extra mowing and stuff. Just having a crew that did that, you know, uh, it, and sometimes we get short handed and, and, and Shane's out there on the mower and stuff. You know, I think we need to pursue that a little bit harder. Yes, sir. That's all I got. Okay, and that leads you to reorganization of your, of your department a little bit. And it seems that. Uh, Seeing you on a lawnmower is not good use of your time. It's not efficient. Exactly. Um, but it's all. But it's all done. that. It needs to be done. But um, you look good on the shade. <laughs> Short <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't mind, you know. But uh, I understand. You know, I, I have other duties, and if I'm not doing my duties, then you know. Right. I understand. It's something I look at, and um, we keep on acquiring buildings, and we in order. Uh, expanding building, and we're not adding to the maintenance staff, and uh, that's one of the. It can turn around and bite if you don't take care of what you have. Um, right, especially with these older buildings. Yeah. So I don't know. I, your your department's one that I really need, you need to look at and see exactly who you are staff the way you need it because um, we just need to make sure we're maintaining everything. And, Ingram, the new Ingram building is old, <laughs> very old, historical. Yeah, uh, and, and currently sometimes we do run high uh, with our, our, our comp time because we, we, we accrue a lot of comp time through the jail a lot of times. It, it's Every person that goes to the jail, well, I, we assign for once a week, rotate them out, but they'll, they'll get a, a couple of hours of overtime there or comp time every week they're there and sometimes more <coughs> depending on what happened because you know we're always there's always an emergency there that's another thing we always do and in trying to with the staff we have if they're off then we're you know we're not doing something else somewhere or something so that that kind of kind of helps hurts anyone any department that continually has overtime and not time 
That's not an efficient use of funds, of taxpayer funds. We're paying them, paying them back time and a half. So the better off increasing staff is not going to cost us. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Okay. Got it. Got it, clerk. You got to make it your items here. 403. are attached with what I presented. I've also presented the, the present layout of the structure in my office as well as what I'm hoping it will be, what I'm requesting it will be. So you're going, the change basically is you're going from two pay grade 17 to four pay grade 17. Well, no, because the two that I, the two admins that I have, they could be reclassified, and they're presently already a 17. So I'm really only increasing two. Right. Okay. You went, you went from two to four. Oh, okay. Oh, so overall, correct. Yes. Your department. Yes, and I am fully staffed. So instead of having two admins, I'd like there to be. Uh, a senior civil, a senior vitals, a senior county court of law, and a senior OPR. OPR meaning land. Official public records. And you're decreasing your overall budget by about three thousand dollars for what? Yes, but with the salary increases, I think the difference between a fifteen and a seventeen is three thousand dollars each. So I guess. You could say it breaks even or it goes over by about 3000 You reorganize your department. You're reorganizing it, correct. And to reorganize it, increase, increase. Pay it to. Yeah. To, um, uh, recognize those staff that uh, are specialized in those duties that people go to for questions anyway. And they train. Um, I just think that it would be more appropriate to have a better structure. It, it would just be more appropriate with the way things actually are. And they need to be compensated with some of those duties that they've been having for years. So. But that's fund, uh, that's the general fund part. I think you can run your department more efficiently and save money, but I don't see any problem with that. Jack, you forgive my ignorance, but would you help me? What, the acronyms. What's CCL? County Court of Law. County, County Court of Law, and then OPR is Official Public Records. Thank you. Or land. <coughs>
We did see an increase in our publications uh, for subscriptions, minor increases. Um, I did ask a little more for publications. I may have just repeated myself, but I meant notices required by law. Sorry. project. I have not received an estimate on that. Um, I think it's actually going to come in less than 45. So just as a placeholder on line item 634. Oh, oh, thank you. Sorry. Parts are very kind of back. Yeah. At 41? Yes, at 41. Again, this is including a portion of salaries. And the actual book preservation project uh, falls on number, number 411, Old Records Preservation. <coughs> I put in the same as last year because I have not received yet the estimate that comes in this week. Um, so that will be reduced because I don't see it being 45, but I just left it in as this. Well, that's what I put in my recommended budget. Yeah. Anyway. That's dedicated by the right. Correct. <laughs> And we'll have our public hearing on that on July 10th. That's what I got through last week. Looks in order to me. Okay. Anything else on record management? Okay. County Clerk Tech Fund. It's 142. It's the next time. So I'm only requesting 720. This is to cover the Laredo Connect. And a lot of times the um, money's collected through, it's called tapestry, whatever records are purchased online, and the county receives a credit for that, and I just request that that credit be applied to this bill, um, but this is mainly a cushion. I don't think we'll use the whole 720, but it's also there just in case. Good job. Okay. And, uh, Core Records Preservation Fund. 143. The next one. So, I need to make some corrections on this one. So, on number 500, software maintenance, that should actually be 4,000. And that will be for the Monarch export tool for public information requests. And then the next line down, num did I give you the wrong, I'm sorry, the first one was 469, that one needed to be 4,000, sorry. Okay, and then the next line after that, 500, that should be 16,000. 16. Correct, and so the total amount this is actually cool. the same as administration, 20,000. Now, if I'm reading this right, I know, <coughs> 469, we budgeted 10, Put zero, but you really need to put four thousand. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. But that's still well within the budget. <coughs> yes. Okay. And I'll need to make a correction if I'm 28. <coughs> The next would be records archival. Um, Judge, if we can, we renamed some of the funds last year. She's actually got fund 28, which is county clerk records management. So if we could get 28 in. 28. I think I shared with the records management. Is it? Okay. Yes. And it's shared with the district yes. clerk. Yes. So whenever y'all are ready, the 28. Already I don't know what number line item 411 is. Um, it just says it's a. I, I don't have any money in that one, just so you'll know. 411 is not one. I do, I am making a request in 569, and that should only be for my portion 39,000. So I'm subtracting the 13000 that I put in there because I moved it into fund 43. Okay, so one more time, that needs to be how much? 39000 39. And I don't know if Donna has something. That 988 is under 411 old records preservation? That's not mine. That, that may be Dawn's. 635411 is what um, it is for actually the shredded program that's countywide that's i did that's say that's, <laughs> that's how the contract was written yeah. so that's yeah. where that money comes from and the only other thing i'm requesting is how much is, is that Tom, how much is that contract that I, I i don't know we pay right now we probably used about fourteen thousand dollars of it and it's from the sheriff's office and everything the sheriff's office everything here at the courthouse and I believe uh, Road and Bridge and well the county outlying areas as well. So, but we pay to have that those old records shredded out of that. And that comes out of four eleven. Yes, and also um, I have my Queso project that comes out of that, and that's around three thousand dollars a year that preserves all of our current records onto CD discs. Um, so that is the other thing that we have that comes out of that line item. And I'm also requesting um, $20,000 added to that line item. I am going to see about getting uh, TerraLogic in. It's a new company. I have old records back to 1950 that we're gonna try to get on Odyssey where everything is open for public view. Um, all of our CDs that we currently have we have two different programs we have to access in order for people to come view our older records, which is microfilm and um, paper vision. And the public doesn't have access to that, so what we're going to do is part of our old records preservation is get from 1950 through 2006 onto our Odyssey, where everybody should be able to access public records on there. And that's going to be civil and criminal. So for my line item, which was below that one, number 569, again, I'm only requesting 39,000. And that's to cover Fiddler, my, my records. I'm going to have nothing for you out of 569? <coughs> out of? Operating equipment? No, none of that. No. I, the only thing is, is the 635-411. That's for the record, actual records preservation then. And you have 76,000 there. If I had a 14, 39, 3, and 20. What? Can you repeat that? I had 14,000, I forget what they're for. Uh, oh, 39 is over there. 14, 3, and 20. Yes. Oh. And that was for shredded? The 14 was for shredded. Right? Correct. No, and, and that's 14. what we've used as of to date right now. You know, it's only 20. James, do you have a total, Dawn, that you're requesting out of that one? 
I left whatever the, the, the court administration put in there and I just added 20 to it, the part that I needed because I don't know what shredded does. One month I paid 3,000, one month I paid 1,000. It varies, it depends on. So you need, instead of it being 55,000, you're asking for 73,000? It's, so it's, got 15, it's got 59 in there. I got 59,988. And find 28? I'm seeing 39,98 on admin. That's the recommendation. I requested 59,988. Did that not show up? So under 635,411. And then whatever Jackie is requesting. So as soon as the 411 is Don's, that's 37,000. And 569 is Jackie's, that's 39,000. That's what I heard. <laughs> uh, the Sheriff's Department, er, er, this is county wide, everybody uses it. This, well, the yeah. shred is county wide. So does each department head pay for a portion of it? I don't pay anything for shred, so I don't know who's covering that bill. Okay. That's why I don't have any. So Jackie, your uh, 569 is going to 39? My, yes. And that's what about the 13 for passion? It looks like it was an input that error. Was a, that was an error. Yes. Okay. This but is for I record that preservation, over. not shredding. No, this is for, well, I guess in a way, yes. Well, my my money is sure. for preservation. What right. I'm requesting is for the program for Fiddler to have it. Right. So we're talking two different things, preserving okay. them or shredding them. So mm -hmm. we so only get those in the same pile. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The shredded program. Does the same company do the do both? No. Fiddler okay. does not. Do so the why are we talking about them together? Because shredded has been in there since I've been counting. Probably before that. I don't know when it was. Your office doesn't use it, Jackie. Uh, if it does, I don't know about it. I know I have shredded things and then maintenance comes pick picks that's up. That's what shredded is. Well, then that's so that you're I don't I don't do it. to find out who's putting what in there. I know that my <coughs> staff uses them. Yeah. So was that your question? Yeah. Do you, you ever because Don said every department uses it. Is that what yes. you said, Don? Yes. Well, since the shredded bin is going to shred it. Because yeah. it's county wide. Right. So every office being as it's county wide. Shouldn't that go through the treasurer's office instead of somebody's line item budget? We should look at what the fund, I mean, the, uh, the uh, fund description the is office. as far as the law goes. Why does one see? department have, have to, does everybody pay a part or is it shouldn't it be a countywide uh, bill? Jackie's office and my office collect fees every for every record that we, that goes through our office. Okay. So those funds are used for preservation or in this case what happened and linda eaker set this up many many years ago so it's been in place for probably 20 plus years i don't know jonathan I, probably knows the history of it the reason is this is a dedicated fund so rather than have it come out of our general fund and general taxes it comes out of fees which is allowable to put it pull it out of this line item that's why it's done the way it's done and it's in Dom's because that time Linda had the money and her wasn't using her records. And it her was records. researched my understanding that this is allowable with those fees. Right. That's why it was done then. That's why it's done because it keeps it out of the general fund. Correct. Because the fee is collected to destroy the record. The fee is collected to do something. The fee goes to a debt to quote. Well and that's and it what? If I pay a fee in the county it goes for a lot of things. It can go for a lot of record preservation things included in that shred. I need my dedicated fund book. I can run and get it to you. It's by TAC, and TAC can spell out what that fund is specific for. I just need a minute to go and get it. I don't think we need details now. Okay. Uh, wait, if that was the question, I was going to go grab some paperwork. Yeah, answer. when somebody pays the county for something, that goes for a specific purpose. We need to mark basically. Correct. It can be used only for that purpose. And it has to be justified during budget I'm just curious why it goes to the district clerk's office. Well, our funds, it's, it's being we share it. Yeah. We share it. We, we each collect a fee, most likely for the same purpose, um, but it goes into one fund. And so we have to talk to each other. Okay, what are you doing with it this year? What am I doing with it this year? And we have to compromise. Um, 
or find other avenues, which I did today. So. Those two controlled this, this fund, how the money gets spent, or we didn't approve it, but they decide <coughs> how to spend. And at one point, the district clerk put credit under her budget that's the same there. That's the allowable use of that money. What's, it, to me, it, it strikes me as if all the utility bills went through Doug's office. You know, we just said, well, we'll just run that through Doug's office. Mr. Madam, is this a way to keep it out of the general fund? Yeah. I'm not trying to give you extra work. Uh, <laughs> just trying to, it doesn't make any sense to me. But if somebody had to do it and somebody said, I'll do it, then okay, I'll do it. So I think I've completed presenting mine. I don't know if Dawn is next. I just wanted to clarify. I think it was an issue of inputting error on, um, but on 28635411, it should be, which Dawn is requesting is a total of 59,988. And then on the line item below, 28635569, uh, Jackie was requested a total of. recommended um, basically I didn't need 450 569 I zeroed that out however I did increase my postage line item where I still have a $2,000 savings in the budget pretty easy that's a wrap <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll, uh, 450 good and the next one? I believe is jury. 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 434. Now this budget did increase a little bit. Um, with the legislature ending, we're still waiting on some stuff. Um, they're looking at increasing jury duty pay. Um, initial pay $20 when you first report, and then every day after is 58 Excuse me, repeat that. Every day after? after? Every day after that, you report is $58, and then the state will be reimbursing us $52 back towards that. So I did increase that um, line item where it's jury pay to $35,000. I believe that'll cover what we need. I did talk to Tracy about it as she's, she pays out for us, so... I did increase that $4,000. Also, the miscellaneous line item, um, I did increase that to $4,000 every year. I have to reconstitute the jury wheel, which um, runs about $3,000. Um, so I felt like it, it, need, it needed to come out of the jury <coughs> line item instead of my district clerk tech fund line item. So because that is for the entire county it's just not related to district clerks so i felt like it needed to come out of the jury part very good then moving on to district record management that is fine 33. Fine 33. okay i think this is the same thing Ella. Okay, um, I can give you what I have though. Let's see. I think this should 
So the budget that you have in front of you shows a zero um, requested amount. However, part of um, the records preservation that I'm trying to do through TerraLogic is um, the entire project is going to cost me about $48,000. So I was going to take part of that from fund, the 28 fund, and I'm going to use the other part out of this fund, which is... Um, I'm requesting $28,000 out of this dedicated fund that I haven't used um, in order to complete that project. So I'm going to split it between Fund 33 and Fund 28 to complete this project. And that's the only request I have coming from there. Next is what? County Law Library? Fund 18. And I really didn't touch this much because it's, this is kind of a, um, we had to put money in it from the general fund because it's just, there's no way to sustain it um, because of the books, plus we're paying the monthly subscription to um, for the Westlaw access, which runs twenty six fifty a month, and then now with the new legislature ending, the judges are probably going to need new law books again. So um, I have no clue what that's going to cost. So I just left whatever the admin recommended budget was basically in there. Um, I showed that you've requested thirty-nine eight sixty. It didn't go up. And then the judge recommended twenty-three thousand. Okay. Then I did eight uh, eight thousand in there for books. I think is where that difference is. Is that right? Is that what you showed? The difference is about twenty-six thousand. Sixteen. Why is mine different there? This is the current. Yeah, but this is our current. I think it's the way of the current. Okay. Well, again, whatever the administration wants to do there, I'm not. Because I think it's just gonna. Looks well, like she. It was just the way it was run. So she's seeing that this year the current budget was thirty-seven thousand. It's about thirty-seven thousand. Thirty-six thousand. And then um, budget recommend or the judge recommended budget is twenty three thousand. So she's because if you keep the West Law intact as it is, that's thirty one thousand eight eight hundred and sixty dollars the monthly, paying that for the year. That's just West Law by itself. Is there a, a consistent increase over the years? that you can look at gauge this. Westlaw is very expensive and the more users you put on it, the higher the rate so goes. There's no way to know that. I mean every stuff two that years. we actually purchase and have upstairs. Or is all like I know we still have to have actual physical books there, but we have some of them online as well. The only thing we purchase are whatever the most current years of, of the Connors are, and then the judges will turn their books in for the previous year, and that's what we keep in the law library. So we don't purchase anything strictly for the law library. We try to use their old stuff, and then they get online. We have an online subscription that they can, uh, Texas Law Help, to look up stuff as well. That's great. I mean, go back to 2122. That would have been the last legislative time that they copy to get the stuff put printed it was forty seven thousand eight seventy four then you need to back it goes up and down every year depending on the legislature. So it seems to me it would probably ought to go forty eight thousand or so based on what we did two years ago. Because it's all in books and we're all the I mean that's a line out of the real changes. Legislative 
legislature didn't get much done this year. I can't see it going up a lot. But. <laughs> Good point. Okay. It just it goes up and down based on look. Now, is that a subscription? You said it's a subscription based. It sounds like the West law is a subscription. Okay. An online so. subscription for the judges and the attorneys. They use that for research. We don't have to pay for the attorneys, do we? County attorneys. Oh, the county attorneys. So you're talking about county attorneys and judges, judges. which is a, a number we can determine. We know how many there are. So is it also then fee based for use? Uh, how is it, you can't gauge it if you know how many subscriptions there are? Well, currently we're maxed out on our subscriptions. So if we go over, which all the county attorneys in their office, they all use it. Um, I don't know if Judge Kelly uses it or not. I believe he's on our subscription. All the district judges. Um, That's the number you can count is what I'm getting. Correct. So if you know you have 20 people, 30 people, whatever it is, you know it's going to cost based on the subscription rate. Right. So how is it that we don't know how much it's going to cost? You said, what is the part that's the unknown? I don't get that. The books, whatever the, the books. judges require in the books. That could be $150 a book. They can be 75 a book. They what want them the for each one of the courtrooms, and they want their own for their office. So you're buying four books, and if it's an, you know, we got county court of law, we have um, the district judges, and if Judge Kelly requests any books, we cover those as well, as well as the JPs. Okay. And they're not required to do that. They're not required, but they use them for when they're on the bench, the books. Well, that seems like the, what I'm getting at, <laughs> is it sounds like a number you can count also. Well, some if, every, if, if you say everyone could possibly request four books or whatever it is, then you can know, you can determine the number. Well, some some want the books, some don't. Like. So you start mm -hmm. off with a maximum figure. And you may not spend it. And we try to get them to give us a big price break. You know, if you order X amount, they'll break the price down for you. But if you only order right two, that. you're paying two hundred dollars a book. If you order seven, you may get them for eighty dollars a book. Sorry, everything costs. I can't. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to figure out what was the moving. It was. You made it sound like a moving target. Every year it is. Well, next year is not a legislature year, but so we don't spend it. You won't spend as much, but but that they just finished. The books are going to come out. It's going to hit during the new budget. I mean, how long is it? Last time we went through it was forty, almost forty eight thousand. Well, she's got 46 of them. Uh, 46 is fine. That's yeah. kind of close enough. Close enough to me. <laughs> Does it look okay here, Doug? Whatever y'all would like. I try to save money, but on some things you just, it's right. very conservative. I've cut everywhere I can cut, but sometimes you just can't. That's good. Appreciate it. But each year they don't meet, you should say you save this money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't order. <laughs> okay, then the last one I think you got is the additional clerk or tech clerk. And that one, um, What's I do say more. Huh? 44. 44. Right <clears throat> I did put in 4000 in there. Is that showing up? Oh, yes, yes, it is. Okay. But since I don't need that in there, so that can be zeroed out. The only thing I do need in there, um, I think, is for, I believe I have to start paying for QuickBooks. So I believe the subscription is $800. Um, so basically, is that what? If I can just leave a $1,000 instead of 4000 in there, that would cover my QuickBooks that I have to pay for for my office. Yeah. Okay. And the only other request I do have, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time, I did submit something for a part-time person in my in the district clerk's office, and 
and that that's going to be specifically for collections. We are backlogged on all our collections within our office, so I am. I got with Rosa, and she did a proposal, and I believe she got it to the auditor um, for a part-time person working several days a week to help us in our collections because um, there's a lot of money that needs to be collected that goes into the general fund that's not being collected because we just don't have the time to do it. So that is my only request. I did request that, and I mean, if that's at a later time, or I don't know if that was added in. We, we if they wanted to, they can talk about it when we're here. We've actually got it on the budget for, I think, one of the workshops in July to actually look at everyone who's made the request. So if you want them to come back at a later date also, that would be fine. But if they want to talk about it now, that's fine too. So. John, how much at uh, any one time would we have out that need to be collected? We probably have with our civil and our criminal, probably easy half a million that that needs to. Part-time employee will get that? If we no. have, yeah. I have a full-time employee that does that every day and then my other staff does it when they have time. However, we've gotten to where we started doing payment plans and things like that. And so that's real time consuming. And so we've had real good success rate um, right now, we've collected mid-year almost $400,000 just on some things that we've done. So um, my compliance department is requesting a part-time person to help her on court dates where we get them into our office and they make payments after court. And that's been a really successful thing. When the auditors were here last year, that is one of the revenues that they questioned on why did her um, collections go up over ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars? So they've done a great job. Hey, you don't. I mean, let's see. We can go we find a friend and we can ask you. We found out if you don't have someone contact these people, they don't pay. Yeah. So we do have someone that's on the phone. There are eight hours that they're here, but she just she's overwhelmed and. What's lacking is we're not getting our civil end done, so now we need to get our civil end, and some of the judges are, you know, we're just trying to get a lot of that stuff cleaned up instead of writing it off. There's many things to come just, the county. I'm in favor of it. I make sure that when we have that other workshop, make sure we bring it up again. Yeah. <coughs> How much are you asking for dollar-wise? Um, I'm requesting just out of, um, I believe it's whatever our, 15 one coming in at 15 one just like a regular deputy clerk but they're only going to work 40 or 58 hours a week and that's week. mainly private i'm oh, sorry um yes <laughs> so right now it's the 15 15 yes all time is 36,982.40 and that's a full-time position so okay. you would just It'll run about thirty-six thousand dollars a year, I think, that we that came up with fun. for that position with roll-ups. Yeah. It'd be more close to that, but then you don't have all the roll-up benefits. Yeah, they get some benefits, yeah. and we're some going to talk about, about it later on in July. Yeah. Do you have an office available or mm -hmm. space available? Or whatever? I do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure. Get it, Jerry. This is apartment 512. 512? 512. Let's give you an overall statement. Uh, my, my budget team and I did a really good job. Uh, primarily consists of Captain Waldrop and my executive assistant hooting on this. We really spent many hours on here looking to see what we could do. We, we cut back some, we added some, we transferred some. So I think we really kept it down pretty well. And like I said, we'll go over the different areas, uh, starting with the jail. Actually, had it not been for our, our WellPath uh, medical services, we would have cut it for $590, which doesn't sound much. But the bad news is they went up $245,000. And we're going to talk about that. That's for WellPath, our jail services. Our contract runs out in September, and we're looking really hard at options. They've submitted a one to three year contract. 
and I'll explain what that is in a minute. And uh, you know, they have the opportunity to go up a certain percentage. So WellPath is our medical services. We have options, but the bad thing, they're the best company. The jail is the biggest <laughs> liability for this capital of everything. It's, it's huge. So what are options? One option is that we uh, go hire our own nurses and doctors. You know, I'm not in that business, nor do I want to be in that business. You know, I have trouble even filling jailer positions, much less, you know, we get traveling nurses, they're hiring at 100 bucks an hour. I mean, we're just not going to be able to compete with that. So for me, that's not an option. The other option is what do we do? We have nothing. Every time they holler something, we take them to the doctor, to the hospital. I don't have the jail staff for that. I have to maybe triple it. You know what I mean? One of the biggest things is hand, handing out medication. Okay, you know, pretty much that takes one nurse the whole time. You know what I mean? We've got 220 inmates. How many, you know, they no more finish what I've been told, and they're handling the second dose out than the third dose. That, that jump up of 245,000, almost 25% is unreasonable, that's crazy. I'm trying to get a phone call and have a meeting with them, but like I said, we're covered up to this September. I've got to quickly look at options, uh, you know, for the future, whether we stay with them. I'm gonna be talking to two other companies in the next two weeks, but I have to put that in here, because that's what we're, right now, that's what I'm faced. Of, you know, it's a good company, they do a good job, but, but that's just an unreasonable increase to me. But that, that's, that was the only jump in the jail. Had it not been for that, we went down. That's line item 51234. Right. But that's all I have. That, other than that, which I think we did a really good job maintaining. Oh, I did lower, one of the good things, yeah. Uh, did lower uh, my jail food. You know, I'm going to gamble. It's kind of going down. I lowered it $42,000. You know, and that's what was able to eat up a lot of things. I went up on the smaller things. Went down on uniforms, no big deal, 230 bucks. But, you know, the biggest one was the jail food. We're pretty, you know, we're going to gamble and hope it stays now. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Harvey? I was just thinking about all the bologna sandwiches you're making over there. Well, it's bologna and peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter. Yeah. That's our options from at night. <laughs> it's a jail and hotel. Bring it. <laughs> I, I can get some over here. I got some downstairs. <laughs> Anything else on jail? Okay, so we're going to the sheriff's department. All right. 560? Are we doing that one today? Yes, sir. What number? 560. Let, let me, yeah, in the opening statements, these are, obviously I have the largest budget in the county. These are just my budget. What this does not include, and I'll be ready to talk at any time today or when we have the other workshops. This does not include two additional positions I'm asking for. One, uh, reclassification or the first responder market adjustment. That is not in here. Those items are not. I'm prepared to talk about that when we are ready. So uh, the, uh, the jail budget. I think once again, we did a very good job. To me, what it looks like, we went up $111,383. Uh, what y'all have to understand to start with is I have several maintenance contracts in there. Those maintenance contracts have went from 2.5 to 20% increases. It's crazy. But I want to give you the five things that made it go up to 111,000. And you know, we did a lot of giving, taking, trading, but these are what are important. You know, my maintenance contracts, you know, jumped up $52,000, okay? And, and I can kind of give you a, with that though, part of that is some, some things we change how we operate. And let me go to that. Is our watch guard system, which is our body worn cameras, uh, that's about 20,000 a year. That's a new fee. So instead of us purchasing anymore in law enforcement, what I see is more reasonable is to lease. You know what I mean? Because all our stuff gets worn out. We're in a five year lease. I've already come to the court and got that approved, but just so you know what, what this big increase was. 20,000 of it is for our body-worn cameras. It's a five-year program. In three years, they replace them. It includes the batteries for free, you know, and storage and all that. What number is that? That's going to be under uh, 56452 is the actual line item. It breaks it all down. I'm just going to give you the big factors. Uh, the emergency notification contract? No, uh, 56457. Maintenance contracts. Okay, so the next one is our tasers. Your tasers are worn out liability-wise. You know, once they're expired, they still work fine, but you know, you don't get coverage. 
through insurance. But so our taser is twenty-eight thousand dollars a year, and compared to coming to you, I need one hundred fifty thousand dollars to outfit us. Is uh, you know I'm doing it on a five-year contract, which they they give the batteries, the cartridges. I think it's a much better deal. And excuse me, I forgot on the watch guard and the uh, taser contract. That is countywide. That's not just the sheriff's office. That includes us, includes animal control and the constables. So you know they are a small portion, but they are a portion of that. So that that is why my maintenance contract jumped up fifty-two thousand. The next thing is the fiber optic line. This is the line that's going to be required to make our new radio system work. It's ran from the Sheriff's Department to Gators in San Antonio. I've only put in for four months of that new contract because we're anticipating getting up around the June or July area. I don't have a final price on that. You know, I'm estimating $3,000 a month for that. Uh, you know, hopefully we're working on some DIR pricing, but you know, that's about the best and safe assessment I thought at this time. I wouldn't see it going over that. What, what number is that? That is 560 Radio Communications. So six months worth. Okay. The next one is 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 training. Training's up 11K. Harley, you can you can do, and that's what I do. Uh, I'm looking. The reason that jumped up, I'm looking at putting two guys through the Peace Officer Academy through my through the Sheriff's Office budget and two guys through the the uh, the jail budget. Uh, the new thing nowadays, you know what it means, is for just like a lot of this is just like what Road and Bridge is going through. Although ours is way more expensive to put somebody through the academy, it's thirty eight hundred dollars. <laughs> And you know, and then six months worth of time, you know, he's going under our tab, come out three, four months of break in time. So you can make him sign a 36, uh, well, you know, some people are doing 36 months, three year contract that they'll stay with you. I think the PD's at three or four years. Is that worth the paper? What it's worth? Can we make him pay? Well, we'll do everything we can, but you can't make him do it. You know, it really would upset me. You know, you put this time and this money in the guy and he goes somewhere else, but you know, we try to keep him happy. Also come with that as subtractive salary. So you can't do that. That's what we're doing. I've got two guys out today that have come through that. I got two guys in right now and two more guys fixing to go through it. You know, you just lose about a year. That's a bad thing. But we've got a homegrown our own is what it looks like. And now using the jail really picked up the morale of the jail because most of those guys are gonna get out on the road, so it's kind of a feeder system. Our capital lease went up eighteen thousand. Those Tahoes are skyrocketing to outfit them or skyrocketing. We wanted six Tahoes this year to stay in compliance with our program. We visited, you know, we made our hard cuts. We think we're going to only ask for three just because of the price increase, but the capital lease is where the 18000 comes from. The, uh, all these items are what I'm telling you is going to make the 111000 that we went up, which I think is extremely reasonable for the sheriff's office. Eight thousand dollars for bulletproof vest. It, we're going up. Uh, let me explain to you on, and I think let you you mentioned it. It's a frustration hiring these people and them not working out. So let me just talk about the jail. When we hire somebody, you know, we don't know if they're going to work out or not. But it cost me a thousand dollars just to just to go through the little process, psychological background testing. Then they go in the jail. And, you know, it's, we don't have OJT on the job training. You know, if you don't like it. You know what I mean, or you know, you leave. So we invest time, we put them through the jailer school and all that stuff, but we have to get them a staff vest, okay? Is the staff vest expensive? To me, no, it's 550, 600 bucks. But when that guy quits, you know, that goes in the closet, okay? And we, and we try to use them against stuff, but we spend a lot of time and money, but when you get over to patrol, these vests are $1,100, $1,200. The grant we get that pays for half of this, that has to be specific measured to that person. Okay. Well, what do we do? Well, we throw them in the closet because, you know, it takes you three, four, five, six months to get a vest today. And we use the best we can, but just if anything ever happened, it's going to go back, was that vest fit for that guy? So in anticipation of us filling all of our spots, we'll get the added spots. You know, I think they, that was the reason with those vests, they went up there about 11 to 1200 bucks a vest. So those items right there make my 111000 which I think is uh, it's, it's not bad. And that's it. I'm open for any questions you may have. Other than that, we just switch money around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to cut, uh, I cut some gas money. It's not a whole lot. Uh, cut 5000 I did everything I could. I would have cut more. I do not feel comfortable with the eclipse coming up. I'm not too worried about the partial eclipse, but I am very worried about the total eclipse. Every single man with a gun and badge will be out 
for you know probably a 72 hour period or you know not at one time stare but we will have every person out and that's not going to be enough but we'll, we'll figure that out so we're going to burn a lot of gas at that time that's it I have a question about um, the radio repairs. That's until we get the new system. You just anticipate them. because we're going to lease stuff after that, right? Yeah, yeah, we're in the process of ordering. You know, it's way behind like anything else, but it's coming. Yeah, radio repair, yes, sir. You know, we still got the 20-year-old radios. Still going to have pretty much throw them away, but we're still buying antennas. We're still getting reprogrammed. You know, we're going to get there this next year. <laughs> well, once we have the new system, it's a lease program, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, 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 let's see. Okay. No, we're purchasing that stuff. The, the radio, I mean, that's what the $7 million, no, you can't lease under that. No. Yeah, yeah, it, it's purchased. It's see, ours. There's something about that that was an upgrade that is a lease. What, what part of that contract am I... Uh, not not the radio. Uh, our tasers are releasing. Our body-worn camera system is releasing, but that's that's, okay, that's ours. The body yeah, yeah, that, 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 is, that is a five-year lease. They replace them. Also, we went to the cloud, which is going to help IT, we hope, right? Tremendously, it's going to be a really good system. But yeah, but it's very expensive, unfortunately, but we're mandated to have that. You good? Yeah. yeah. All right. That's it. We're going to secure the next. Okay. 564. Let me find that real quick. Okay, 564, you know, went up $2,000. Uh, utilities, when I say utilities, that's not just electricity, that's city water, sewer, Time Warner, Time Warner. I don't know, uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you got Bandera Electric, I got that nasty letter, I'm very upset about it. 13% uh, increase, you know, who knows, that's just for the electricity part. You know, 2000 I think is fair to, you know, hopefully stay with it. That's, that's ridiculous, I think, 13%, but what do you do? Yeah, so, donation fund. That is 172. <coughs> Okay. Basically, I just took, uh, I mean, that's our funds we're going to use. Uh, did you have a specific question about it? I mean, it's, it's pretty. So it's just on the list. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you have a question, you should fire away. But, and I don't see anything on the description of that list. Okay. Yeah. okay. Scat grade. That's 173. And you know, visit with Tanya, we had a really good meeting and she kind of explained some things, you know, how to operate a little better, more efficient. We basically taken that money and divided it up and we intend on using it for some different items inside the jail. That's why we're able to lower some of the jail items, but this is how I split it up and uh, what it looks like. Okay. okay. Next is uh, SO law enforcement. SO law enforcement. Uh, this is our uh, forfeiture account. Basically, just kind of divided it up in case we run out of money somewhere. That's how I intend on using it. It's kind of what we have our, our seized assets kind of took and divided up and put it in these different categories in case we needed it. Okay. Sir, how much uh, are forfeitures? It seems like they're increasing yeah, far more than we used to. You're dang right. <laughs> yeah, every one of those vehicles I see, like I said, I don't care if I get a hundred dollars, we're seizing them. You know, I you know, hope it I look for it for another year or two, get a new president, I think it's gonna slow down a lot. <laughs> that's just how it's only hope. Yeah. Yeah. But that's uh yeah, we're to continue. Okay. Courthouse security. Uh, I think that one is just. Uh, you guys to build it. Oh, sorry. Uh, Twenty nine. Oh, sorry. Twenty nine. Yes. Flip backwards. Y'all ready? Oh, we got it. Uh, Nine hundred thirteen dollars. Really reasonable. Uh, that's just maintenance contracts that are for the courthouse. I have it's out of my control. It's anywhere, like I said, from two and a half normally to five percent. Some have went twenty percent, but this one did. These were these were reasonable. So nine hundred thirty nine hundred thirteen dollar increase during the court. There's one new one we need to talk about. Okay, before we leave the security, okay. where are we on the courthouse security that was planned for the bond issue that didn't happen? Um, 
we're looking at increasing, you know, going to fobs, what do you call them? The doors, uh, looking at the number of exits we have, entrances we have, how it's not a good situation. And uh, are you, do you have any plan to do any well, work? Well, what, what we have, I provided, I think it was the Senate email to the judge, it's about $55,000. We, I recommend we do that to the court. I'll come for you any time, and we do that immediately out of ARPA funds, I said. Uh, basically, what's happening right now at my annex, or the annex, where SOBCID, the DAs, and probation are, they're starting to fail. The fobs are starting to fail. So we're issuing keys. We've been buying a lot of keys. I don't like that as far as an audit system. You know, can somebody get somebody a fob? Yes. But I mean, you know, we can cut that fob off immediately. Keys get handed out? I don't know. I don't like that. What I'm being told by Guardian is that to make that work, the brain here has to be fixed. Okay, and, and, I, and he could, Bruce can help me out. He knows a lot more than me. Uh, it just happens to be under my budget. But anyway, you know, so we need to get that done, and that's a start. In, in doing it, it's $55,000, but that will allow us to expand. It's one of my main things I'm learning. We can expand it you know to ingram we can expand to the animal shelter whatever you want to do so that's probably something you know it's not just a patch it's more of a fix but we need to do that probably as soon as possible does that price include the brain surgery yes it's just server yes to uh to me that sounds like a bargain compared okay. to what the estimate was for ingram alone right so no no that, don that is not doing Ingram. i understand okay that. but that's but, Capability to do Ingram. When we Capability to do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or so, just Ingram. Yes. Sir. It was like twenty, wasn't it, Bruce? Somewhere. I think it's close. So, if, if we have a power failure, if we have a server down, we can't get in or out of the building. Yes, we sir. Access still. Well, yes, sir. A key. A what? A key. Yeah. Well, a key always works. So why go to the fob? You have an audit trail. That's the biggest thing. Who's coming in and out? So it's still a key. Is that what you're saying? It's, it's like a new car key. key. It's still a key. Yeah. Does like, it open the door? Yes, sir. It's a metal key. No. No, it's, it's electronic. Like a, it's an electronic key that can fail. Also, like go to the motel, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. I mean. It's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of those. You're are adding good. a fail point to the. Pretty, you can get keys that can't be duplicated. You can have locks that have keys that cannot be duplicated. Correct. They can be shared. I mean, we are things. We already have the system. But I certainly wouldn't want to do away with it. We're just kind of upgrade. I mean, it's 20 years old. Like, you know, what do they say? The other shelf life. But I agree with what you're saying. But it's it's a good way to audit. And like I said, if somebody's terminating any kind of issue, you can immediately turn that off. You know, as far as getting the key, you know, we've had to go to the officers' houses when we fire and go get their key. I mean, I mean. You know, the Bob had keep it, you know, cost me five dollars, but cut it off. But it's pros and cons. Yeah. So Judge, uh, another workshop we're gonna talk about all the that that does be a capitalized thing. Right? Yeah. They sound pretty reasonable to me. Oh uh, I yeah. I thought choking me. Yeah. Limited. That was a hard no. Yeah. yeah. Ingram. And then look at this place. Uh, yeah, look at this place. Egress, egress points. How many do we have? Oh man. Look at that. I can get started with Piper. There's no good chance, aren't you? Yeah. Still big, there's still bones in there. Oh, they're fighting in and out. The last one I've got on here says unclaimed capital credits. <laughs> Judge, if we can insert fund or Department 630. This is where we moved um, doves to for all of the expenses for the emergency okay. management. I was so wondering why you're here. Let me, let me tell you, yeah, doves is here for himself, but don't worry about that. He's <laughs> 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 um, worried about this one. Uh, what I did is uh, I feel more comfortable. I, I didn't think it was fair to my budget. My understanding is Dove uh, uh, was picked up by the sheriff's office, which is a very good deal. I think most places, emergency management is a separate department or division. But anyway, the bad thing, he was picked up, which is a good thing. The bad thing, he wasn't provided a budget. Doug cost me a lot of money. Okay, <laughs> Doug cost me a lot of money. So I don't think that's fair to my budget, you know, so I got with, the, got with the auditor and asked, can I have, I know it's another budget, another line, but I asked, can I have my own so I can track a budget, what he cost me. 
to have them around. But, uh, you know, but simply it wasn't a big raise. We basically, you know, we, uh, Ted, they pulled his salary out, his vehicle, his gas, his uses. There was a, a little bit more on that, uh, but I think it's very minimal for, for, you, for that service. But that's kind of where, how this come up today. That way I can track that stuff more. We can add and increase and decrease as needed. It makes sense. The first responders are paid out of this also. So the last line you see there, right. and y'all may see it again if they want to come back and talk about <coughs> their <coughs> That's it. And Jody, I think this will probably help with the grant application that emergency services sector. Okay. Okay. That's it. Look at that. Anything on there? Okay. Unplanned capital assets? 149. Basically, this starts housekeeping a little bit. So it's 23,000. This is the money that comes in from people that do not cash in. I believe it's mainly their electrical um, dividends that they get out, that they receive every year. So they're turned over to the state. So we ask the state if they would send us an amount and they do every year. This is used to pay a portion of the Economic Development Corporation amount that we pay annually. And it is one of the acceptable uses. Okay, you got that done. We, we can do more. I have more ready or we can stop and we can add on to a different one. Well, it is. We need to start having lunch occasionally. Is that a good place? Are y'all How many more do you have to look at? Probably about 30. Probably. They should be pretty fast. Okay, now we can do fast ones. Okay, so if I start with the 216th District Court. The 198th District Court and the Drug Court, that's 435, 436, and 437. There are no changes to those. Okay. So just to bring your attention, um, alternate dispute resolution is fund 40, or tab 40. There are not any changes to that. The money that comes in here are collected from fees from the district clerk, county clerk, and the JPs, and it's used to pay for our mediation. We have a contract with somebody that offers mediation. Okay, they didn't change. Drug court, did you do that one? I did that one, there are no changes. Okay. And the Justice Court Building Security? So that is tab 13 that you'll see there. Basically, there's money in fund balance. These are just security improvements at a justice court building. We receive very little money from that. Okay. Toronto Road Trust? That is 71. We receive money from this in revenues, but we are not spending any of the money at the current time. Um, in, the, in the last three years, this has moved to be under the county as a separate fund. Before that, it was being managed outside. And so the fees of that between the tax return and some other fee that was being charged, um, it was eating into the corpus. And so we brought it out now and we're saving up their interest right now, so it builds the trust amount, the original principal amount back up. Okay, that was done. Opioid okay, settlement fund? Um, 79. So this is from the settlement. We have received $68,577 in the current budget year, so that leaves 247 left. For next year and 
we've got that we may spend all 315,000. There's not projects that have been identified for this as of right now. That has specific uses, correct? Right? Correct. Yeah. And what? Treatment or something. That's really related to, yeah, yeah. treatment. We may be able to use that for court. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, then we go to the debt funds. Um, yes. Um, if I can talk probably from the summary, we can look at the individual funds if you want in the back. But if you'll look at your summary, to me it's almost easier to look at at the very front of your book. Right, right. Okay. And so basically we've got $167,700 that we believe will be our fund balance starting the year. We will need tax revenue of $3,187,000. We'll receive, we believe, another $80,000. That's from the hookups from the East Kirk County Wastewater Treatment Plan. I believe it's $2 a month, if I'm not mistaken, that comes in to the county toward that. $20. Okay. And so, Anyway, that's turned over to us monthly as it's collected by the Kendall County Wastewater. I can't think of what they're called. Waste. Kendall County WCID. Kendall Thank County WCID, number one. Thank you. And so total revenues three million two hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. The debt and the um, fees that are charged by the people that are holding the money in escrow. For all of those, three million two hundred twenty-three thousand three hundred forty dollars. And so, if you add the over/under revenues that we expect to get for about forty-four thousand, add that to our beginning fund balance, we'll end the year somewhere around two hundred eleven thousand dollars. And that covers the 2015 jail bond, the TWDB EKCP construction, uh, COs, Lake Amber and the State Road District, 2023 limited tax bonds, 2021 tax note, and the 2020 refunding bonds. Judge, let me, it, it covers everything except for 63. The Lake Ingram Estates Road District. Okay. That's one of the special taxes. They've got their note that is being paid, but the people that pay that are the people that live in that road district. And we do budget that separately. It's so down below. I see it. Road district? Yes. So that is 63. And so we've got that next year we're going to collect about 41 bucks. 21.5 in taxes, and then we're going to pay out about 22.8. Okay. Anything else for today? No, sir. Yes, you did. Okay. With that, then we will be adjourned.